If we talk, now 500,000 they go summer house, call them head speech. But fear not, my ego don't come. In go touch light every corner, looks and cranny of all these bad, bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make me love Every corner. Okay, some people be they hala say they want the power. Chai. Them be promise us say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day dollar just they get the higher power. Over naira. See them talk say make we off mind. But then go say my ego yeah, don't come. So my people make you loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. They do even no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my ego, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my ego diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they tip money in buck. Woman picking, they the street, they hawk. Still, them talk say, make we not talk. But thank God say, my ego don't come. So my people make you laugh. Like oh, yeah, yeah. you from wherever you are watching from it is my ego lie we're supposed to have our people's parliament uh, tonight we may see a bit but uh let me get you fully into the all uh, program first into the night uh, share this broadcast after reading the caption of uh, the caption, uh, the description as well. Okay, like the broadcast. I think this also will kind of make it easier for others to see it too. And thank you for joining me. Okay, share the broadcast. <laughs> I am I am am They have declared nine people wanted for the slain uh, soldiers in Okwama. Despite the people's uh, denial, we didn't do this. We do not have the capacity to carry out this kind of attack. Please do a thorough investigation. But without the courts, 
the Nigerian army have declared nine people wanted, including an Igwe, supposed a king. And yes, we are. Also, we just received the report this afternoon that the Nigerian court has ordered the Nigerian army to release 313 ISWAP terrorists because they are not terrorists. Somehow they should be freed. And the Nigerian army said, Our hands are tight. We just have to let them go. <laughs> Now, Motibe. So, good morning to you once again. Good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining us from. It is Mayego Live. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining me. Since uh, you possibly have read the caption by now, the description of this uh, conversation tonight, and we are going to be starting from uh, Okwama or Okwama. This uh, is a community that has been accused of uh, being behind the uh, killing of uh, Nigerian soldiers who were supposed to be on peace mission to go to the community. The community came out and said, well, they didn't come to our community for peace or what have you. They came to survey the land. They said they came to meet with the people and trying to understand the area. And then they met with their leaders. Then at the end of that meeting, which has nothing to do with uh, Okoloba and then uh, Okwama, they said they wanted to take their leaders away. Why would you want to take our leaders away? No, you can't. Boom. It was what got the soldiers uh, very angry, and they started shooting them right there and then from their, uh, from their uh, community all to their communities, their homes and all that, right? The terror was unleashed on them for 48 hours before we could even hear what was going on. The terror in Okwama started as far back as the 10th of March. We did not hear about uh, the terror, the Nigerian military terror in that axis until the 15th of uh, March when they said some soldiers have been killed and buried. Yeah, buried. So how could people who went for peace meeting or peace mission be killed and be buried by the community? And for days, your military have been killing them until you decided to tell the whole world or probably tell everybody, oh, they've killed their so so people. And the people came out and said, no, we didn't do it. No, we did not. We didn't even have the capacity. Have you been to Okwama? Have you seen our community? We do not have that capacity. When these guys came, they came in gunboats. It's a riverine area. And uh, the Nigerian military themselves came out. Nigerian army came out and said, these guys were there to clear some of uh, the illegal oil bunkering going on in that place. And turning around to now blame the community again. Yeah. Initially, they said they went there to go and settle peace. But you won't go settle peace between two people where they fight. Yeah. And you enter one people play, one, uh, one party place. The other party, where they fight with, no day the peace meeting. So, which kind of peace meeting is that? Yeah. And why would you go for peace meeting and then you wanted to arrest their leaders and said they should follow you to where? There are so many questions. So they changed the story at a point. They said, no, they went there to rescue kidnapped victims. Okay. So they are, they are rescue as Abi. And uh, that must have meant that there are some terrorists who took people that they wanted to go and rescue. No, they changed the story. They said, no, 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 no. It wasn't. Uh, they were fighting and to stop a uh, bunker. Those who are still in Nigeria crude oil. They are very rampant in the axis, and this man has been clearing them. This group of soldiers killed have been clearing them, you know, dislodging all of the, uh, dislodging all of the illegal oil uh, activities. 
until the, until they got to Okwama, and somehow somehow they died there. So who killed them? And what has this got to do with other communities that are currently being attacked as well by the Nigerian army in Bayelsa? Other communities in the same axis of Delta, did they have something to do with the killings too? What about uh, the Sifnubu that said that uh, the Nigerian army should not punish uh, civilians? And right now, the wanted people are the people that came out to say, no, we were not at war with Okoloba that will require the presence of the military. They are not telling you all that happened. And they are, in fact, not telling you who killed them. The people that came out to say they are destroying our properties, they are burning our houses. We have nowhere to run to or who to go to. Our children, people are being killed. And there's nobody to have access to those places. And those people we can't manage tell us what's going on in that place. They are the wanted people now by the Nigerian army. So this is the image. A lot of people have been debating this online, trying to figure out if the Nigerian army has such power to declare people wanted. But since Steve Numbu gave them the full authority, you see the man at the number seven, that's a king. That one is supposed to be a king. That man, uh, Clement Ikolo. Again, uh, Rukewe. Hmm? Rukewe. He's supposed to be a king. But <clears throat> he has been listed as uh, one of the people who killed Nigerian soldiers. The guy at number eight, you probably have seen his video on Mayegun's diary, Politico. He was also the boy that came out to say they were lying. The Nigerian military were conducting and many other security agencies were conducting illegal uh, bunkery in that axis. Eh? So now his name has been now put up as among the people that killed 17 soldiers. Look at that woman, the woman that cried out in that video that uh, her, her face was blood. But I think uh, the people that blood in face of uh, those people who spoke uh, at, with them then, when that event happened, right? So many of them, they were not, their faces were not properly covered. These were the people who escaped some of the attacks at the earlier stage and then went on to try and tell the world what is going on in uh, Okwama. Trying to let everybody see the true picture of what's going on there and how much, there, how much cover up is going on as well. Now, you remember that woman? Yeah, they have listed her as one of the people that killed soldiers now and then others too. Okay. So, as a cover up for the crime, economic crime that the Nigerian army is either committing in that part of Nigeria or trying to cover up. So they said this same thing also took them to Edwin Clark's house. Is Edwin Clark, does Edwin Clark lives in Delta states? I always sort of believe that Edwin Clark lives in uh, River states, maybe Port Harcourt, right? In the course of that, in the course of uh, 17 killed soldiers in Okwama in Delta states, we have also heard that uh, even Edwin Clark don't collect on top of this. I don't know if you have heard it. Watch this. So, Jonathan, what more do we know about this raid on the homes of Pa Edwin Clark and his his father? Are there any more details that have been revealed uh, that you have heard of? Well, first, let me express uh, the collective sadness of the job people over this uh, provocative actions of the Nigerian military in their quest for justice for slain officers, which the entire Nigeria uh, shared uh, the grief with the Nigerian military and the desire for all Nigerians to get uh, culprits being brought to book. For us as a job people, it almost appears like there's a targeted onslaught against the job people using the scenario of what happened at Okwama. Uh, asking for details about what had happened uh, regarding the invasion of our father's home. 
there's no truth as to the claim that uh, criminals who were involved in that dastardly act had any trace uh, of being in Parklax, whom either in Ugeli or in in Kiagbodo, his hometown. Let me tell you this. There's quite a distance between Ugeli and Kiagbodo community, wherein Parklak has his home. And from the message from our father was that the GOC had earlier spoken to him concerning uh, an operation uh, which they uh, apologized that it was a misinformation that led them raided his house in Ugeli. And the elder statesman accepted the apology in, in the hope that it was an honest mistake by the Nigerian military, maybe uh, via uh, uh, an information that perhaps not correct. But after he had spoken to the, the GOC, he had also sympathized with the Nigerian military, only to be inundated with further calls that his home in Kiagbodo, where the Parklak University resides, has been invaded, where virtually every uh, uh, houses within the neighborhood were broken, and people held hostage as though they were the real suspects or criminals around. You know, and then it simply ends with the apology. The simple question is, who is not aware that Parklak's house is resident in Kiagbodo? Who can tell Nigerians truly that they are not aware that they were just passing by and just ran into Parklak's home and then treated the old man and the people who are his staff and then his, his, his family members with this level of uh, 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 disdain or treatment on account of uh, an incident that every Nigerian are in solidarity with the military. Let me say this. It is becoming quite clear to us that there's more to this Okwama incident. I would not be surprised when many job people will be targeted and their homes perhaps uh, raised down on account of looking for people who had a role in that incident. Parklak is perhaps just one out of several that perhaps uh, are on the line of being targeted. Otherwise, if the GOC had spoken to him earlier and uh, I mean, apologized to the elder statesman that uh, it was a misinformation that perhaps led them to raid a home, which they only later discovered that was uh, his family home. Now, going further to his community, which is a distance from Ugili, to conduct such an operation, it, it calls for concern. So, Jonathan, what more do you So, this is the development, okay? And you will only hear when uh, the home of, uh, in quotes, important people uh, is uh, invaded. But before they go to Piedwin Clark's house, they've been to hundreds of other houses, communities, right? Where people's lives have been turned upside down. Apart from homes being invaded, people being shot, and their bodies being taken, Eh? People have been subjected in these communities now, right? They have been subjected to a, I mean, a sort of a dehumanization. Do you understand what that means? Like, you are not in military rule, but the military is declaring civilians from communities under attack. They are declaring them wanted. And until they are satisfied that, yes, we are now satisfied, everyone is going to be subjected to this level of criminal dehumanization. Here is another person here who are now kind of like, you know, it's becoming like, okay, yeah, it's like they are targeting us. There's something they are after. 
And we know this is not about just the killed soldier. We want them to go after the real killers if they know them. But why subject communities into this kind of uh, uh, terrorism, this act of terror, if it is not deliberate? And it's Nigeria, here you get the jaws, the Eurobos. As much as, uh, you know, they're like uh, what they call the, uh, you know, the wrangling siblings from, from time immemorial, because I was reading about them the other day, and they said that uh, the jaws and the Eurobos, eh? it'd be like, say, they don't no feel wait to just uh, kill themselves at any time, any given opportunity. But, uh, if external comes in between them to try to say, ah, okay, hey, you, you, Joe, you are wrong, you, Robo, you are wrong, or this one, you are wrong, right? The two of them will join them together, face you. You will come be like, ah, I thought you were fighting. So right now, before this whole thing escalated to this, Okoloba, we're told, is Ijo. Uh, Okwama is uh, Yorubo. I don't know if I mix them up by the way, but, right? So, the jaw is said, I mean, the Okoloba, Okoloba people are said to want to, they are encroaching on the lands of the Yorubos. They want to take them. Okay? But right now, that the Nigerian army is now killing them, both the jaw, Yorubo, Shekirio, everyone in that axis is collecting that, that this state sponsored terror now from the Nigerian army. Or maybe let's say they unite. Oh. True, true. Here is another person from that. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, before I answer that, let me just give you a bit of a uh, background that I think is important uh, for this discussion. I was born at Otuabagi, where the first oil well was drilled, uh, the one that was found in 1956. And then I attended, uh, I lived at the Pioneer Refinery Quarters at Alice Leme. I attended a primary school that was so close to the refinery jetty in, those, in the 70s. I live at Ekpetama Kingdom where the biggest or your most expensive or most valuable onshore uh, facility that belongs to Shell is located. And then I'm a member of 38th regular cause and then a traditional ruler. And then the author of the riddle of the oil thief. What has just happened is what is called uh, oil-induced violence. And I think the press is not emphasizing that. Uh, the Niger Delta communities and kingdoms are oil fields that belong to private hands all this while. And from 1967, I will say, that those oil fields, which means our kingdoms and communities have been killing fields. And so this is not the first time it's been happening. It happened during the Civil War and after the Civil War, it happened in Odi, happened in uh, um, um, Ogoni, happened in Omuchem, and so on and so forth. And I can tell you pockets of this type of killings have happened several times over without consequences. Will any normal human being, for instance, take a gun and point at his own soldiers, national heroes, and shoot them to death? Something is wrong. And that thing has to be unraveled because I'm more concerned about getting to the bottom and then also preventing this type of thing from recurring. It's, it's very important to do that. I believe strongly because from the people I know, the, uh, the chief of defense staff is personally known to me, a well-trained, well, -trained, well uh, and excellent officer. The chief of uh, army staff is well known to me, excellent officers. I believe that they will do uh, uh, everything properly to ensure that everyone is brought to book. However, no matter how it goes, uh, Nigeria has to ensure that everybody concerned is brought to justice. Anything short of that means that we are just going to be postponing the doomsday. Because like I said before, this is not the first time. And then if we don't get to the bottom and resolve the, the major issues behind it, then we will have uh, this type of thing recording maybe in the next week or in the next month. You must understand that, uh, like I said before, it is an oil-induced violence. So it has to do with oil and gas, because that whole area may either belong to one OML 43 or 45 or something. Because my kingdom is OML 28, and it spans most of Bielsa State as well as River State. So our kingdoms are essentially oil fields that belong to people. Now, those places we've uh, 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 brought in well over three trillion dollars in the last couple of decades. If you go to this community, do they look like habitations for human beings? Do they look like places where human beings live? Are those persons who have uh, gotten so, uh, I don't know whether disillusioned 
are so uninformed as to take up arms to shoot military people, normal human beings? Are they supposed to be out there just roaming like normal human beings? If you are considering them normal, I have a big question mark to put there. That is very important. The communities are in squalor. They look like squalors. And so the people may not have gotten what is ordinarily supposed uh, for, for them to have to relate with people properly. Do they even know that soldiers, for instance, are there for them? So all these are fundamental. Is there sufficient uh, naira and kobo flowing in those communities, in those areas? Are the people seeing themselves as Nigerians, for instance? Do they know that they are citizens and so have rights as citizens? These are fundamental. But I believe strongly that no normal human being should shield anybody that is a suspect. After all, it is the military's duty to investigate, as far as uh, I'm concerned, and get to the bottom of this. because. Otherwise, there will be a recurrence, and uh, you never can say how worse it will get in the very near future. Okay, you know something, right? Let me make it easier for you what is so hard for that uh, guy to really say. He seems to be one of uh, the Amanayan Ambo, Abiyamanayan, uh, and Amanayan, Abiyamanayan. Right? You know, when they dress like that, it's like king, okay? So he's practically saying that, number one, if you look at all this, com this particular community and the communities in those, I mean, that area, eh, uh, can you in true sense of it say these communities have the capacity to, to raise a gun and turn it uh, on their soldiers and kill them? Well, that answer may be dodgy rather than say where well, they don't have the capacity. Well, you may say, well, I don't know. That is one. The second part is that, uh, again, have you been to those communities, really? The communities that have uh, sort of coughed out or uh, earned Nigeria trillions of dollars in the last uh, a few decades. Have you been to those communities and see if those communities are actually like habitable for human beings? So the point, have you been there? Now, if you have been, if you have been to those communities, you probably will conclude that yeah, these people look like human beings living here, but this can be human beings. There is no way human being can, any human can survive here. No way. And any human that survives in this area, in this place, they can't be ordinary human anymore. So you get that kind of feeling that you'll be like a man. People live here. They say, yeah, people live here. Are you serious? Like people, people, human beings. They say, yeah, they live here. We have, we have king. Yeah, we have markets. See, we have everything there. So what? So what he's practically saying is that uh, if the Nigerian army genuinely want to be honest and sincere and they know these areas, they will not turn their guns just on everyone or everyone there. They will rather do their investigation well and go after the real killers. If the killers are among the civilians there, this is that community next to the water. That is Okwama. Ali, you saw that, Abi. If you are watching on YouTube, eh, you can just throw the video back by two minutes. Yeah, just two minutes. You will see that place. You see where all those people walked out, yeah? That's Okwama. And that is not a recent video, too. Here is another one. Still talking about the people declared wanted. And... What people from the area really have to say, and now they see it. Mind you, see, uh, GCN. I do not know the full meaning of GCN, okay? But that sounds like some classy, uh, you know, title there. But thank you uh, from Canada. Bless you. Um, his mission, there was a kind of misunderstanding between two communities, Yokoloba and Okwama. Okoloba being an Ijo community, and then Okoma being an Orobo community. But it is not so much about the ethnic division. These communities are intertwined. They are so integrated in so many ways. In, in, in tradition, in marriages, in so many ways, they are integrated. And if there is any kind of dispute, it's something that can be handled. But this time, maybe the level was a bit 
uh, above the ordinary. And the, uh, the, 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 the story is that the Delta State government actually went into it. it was, it was, uh, the Delta State government was on top of it. Meetings were called. Uh, our calls were assigned. And everything was okay. The, the next we had was that um, military officers and men went to the place on a peace mission. Who invited them for that peace mission has not been clearly stated. Was it the leadership of the community? Was it the, le the political leadership? That is the leadership of the local government. The two communities spread between two local governments, Bumadi local government and Ugeli South local government. Are we talking of the leadership of the local government that invited them for that peace mission? Are we talking of the community leaders that invited them for that peace mission? All of that has not been established. But, but uh, what, what can we establish? Uh, that those who say this was not about land dispute. No. Uh, that this was maybe about oil, illegal oil bunkering and some of the tussle between these communities about a whole lot of talk relating to oil. Is that true? It's very true. It's very true. Nothing, nothing so grave happens in the Niger Delta without oil underlining it. That has been said before. And that has also been confirmed by the Chief of Army Staff. When we are looking, fishing for other facts is what I don't understand. Let's keep that narrative. What will happen is that whoever is accessory in any way to the killing, if investigation brings that person out, fine. Nobody is going to query that. Nobody is going to raise issues. Mm -hmm. regarding but Mr. Godot, what are the facts on the ground as the community knows it now? What are the facts? Because the community seems to have their own fact, and what they do know uh, is against the fact that those who believe that uh, if there are conflict between two communities, Okolobo on one hand, Okoma on one hand, there are those who think in that community that why is the pressure on Okoma community? What exactly was the reason why the Okoma people believe that there was too much of pressure and there was a side taking against them? Yes, because uh, what we hear and what everybody says is that Youth of Okoma community killed the soldiers. And the Okoma community, they are not even in the stead. As we talk today, the community does not exist. What do you mean? In Doesn't time and space. Of course, you, the military has taken over the community. We don't even know where the people are. Nobody reaches the leaders. They have all gone underground. And so they are not even able to present their own story. They have not said anything. What we are running with is a single narrative as told by the army, the military authority. Is it true that the youths, uh, rampaging youths of the community killed the soldiers? That is the issue for determination. And that is why the president set up an investigation team. And no investigation has been done. That has not been established. And so to come to that conclusion... It's just judicial. Mm, but th there, are, there are some key elements, uh, some key personalities yes. who are so-called the big boys, which you know some of the facts that have been thrown around the, co the conversation and narrative within the Yoruba community and the Ijo community about these personalities, some of them who have been in government before and some of them who are deeply involved in oil refining and uh, illegal bunkering and all what have you. And these are some of the facts that could help the nation to be able to know where exactly we are headed. What can you tell us? What exactly are the grievances or the conflict? What was the bottom line of the conflict? So if all of this is known to the authorities, why are they not just doing that? Can you tell us? That's why you are here. Yes. To let us know what the facts that are not out there, the, what we do not know. That's why you are here. What we do not know, the facts that are not out is that it is not true that those gallant officers would have been taken out by just community boys. As so much to it. And the, the story is that they were not just only killed, their bodies were mutilated. And so there was some kind of anger. What kind of a, 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 an attempt to just pull out something, to get even with some grievance, 
And so it's deeper than community. I said in one forum that that community, as we know it, is just a rural community, does not have the capacity to deliver that level of tragedy. And when the, when the, when the president said this thing was going to be investigated, we were all happy. But the military is pushing against every other view and maintaining that persons from Mokwem. Did you get that now? Uh, so the narrative out there is what the military told the press. Every other view, every other evidence, or, uh, you know, sort of uh, open ups and all that, they don't want to hear it. The youth of the community, they killed the uh, colonel, they killed the uh, major generals, and they killed their uh, soldiers, 17 of them, and they butchered them, and they buried them. Have you seen Okuma, I mean Okwama community? You, there is no way you will see that community and not ask that question again, like how? How did they do it? How? Okay. So if you ask any question, if you try to kind of uh, get other people's uh, voices sort of aired, boom, the Nigerian army may declare you wanted. Because most of these people on this list, right? They were those who make statements. They were contrary to a peace meeting, peace meeting that the Nigerian army and the Nigerian media were telling everybody, all these people, they've done nothing. Oh, these people are not killers. Oh. These are people from either the community or other communities who have spoken out on the activities and the legalities of the Nigerian military in that axis. But guess what? They have printed all their names as wanted people. And they didn't only say that. They said photographs of wanted person in connection to the killing of 17 Nigerian army personnel at Okwama community in New Delhi, South Local Government Area of Delta State on the 14th of March, 2024. Meanwhile, the, the uh, killings that started, that you are hearing about today, right? The killings that started in Okwama started from the 11th. From the 11th, they have been killing them since 11th. All right? So then they reported that, uh, oh, they killed soldiers on the 14th. There is no, they didn't do any autopsy. There is no post-mortem or anything to describe the, the, I mean, how did those uh, soldiers died. Okay? So were they kidnapped? Were they tortured? Were they starved to death? Were they shot? All of this now, they've buried them. They've buried evidence. And they want all of us, okay, to believe everything they say to us. If you dare for say something otherwise, and for some reason what you say should go viral on social media, the Nigerian army will declare you wanted. They will say you are among those who have something to do with the killing of their, of their colleagues. So to those of you who are looking for... Make military come take over. Make military to, to come take over. I hope you you are going to be. Uh, you would have to review uh, what you are wishing for. You might be very careful for what you wish for. I tell you. So and then uh, our hearts uh, uh, and love goes to the uh, the victims of uh, this military terrorism in that axis. And to the families of uh, the slain soldiers, it's unfortunate you will never know who killed your family members. You will never know the corrupt institution they are working for that could plot their death because of the black, I mean, of, the, of, of the evil business, bunkery that they are doing in the Niger Delta region. And you have heard them. Any fight will happen for Niger Delta is oil induced. The people of Niger Delta, eh? You see, I gonna know. You see, the people of Niger Delta, all people who live in there, I mean, the Robos, the Ujo, I mean, the Jaws, the Shekiris, and the rest of them, like that, eh? 
to the owners of Nigeria. They are just quarters. Listen to me very well. You, uh, middle, uh, sorry, Niger Deltans watching me right now. To the owners of Nigeria, you are just scotters. You are scotting on their oil field. If they have their way, they can actually wipe all of you out of that place because, like, our oil, our oil, our oil. Your oil, your oil, oil, your oil. Oil will be say, you know, home, except if you have to go and steal them. Now, some of your children to survive. They have to steal your oil in Niger Delta. You know that if the owners of Nigeria, from Shokoto to Lagos, eh, from eh, Oshogo to Agodi, eh, now, from Kano to where again, eh, to the entire caliphates, the owners of eh, the oil, they are not from Niger Delta. And that is why. You may know yourselves by name because they are your ancestral land, Abi. We are Yorubo. Oh, we are Ijo people. We are Ijo, our fathers, our fathers own this land, and our Keniko Keniko. You better stop deceiving yourselves. As Nigeria is, as Nigeria is concerned, you are just squatters on those land. You know that, or you don't. And you are just number. Your land that you call kingdoms. They are just numbers in their book. OPL 45, OPL 13, OPL 144, OPL 290. You know, they are OPL, eh? OPL, operating, uh, we see you call that again, oil platform. I became a man an OPL. I don't know, I don't care, but it's actually about uh, oil rig, I mean, clothing pay, oil rig. So it will tell you, say, some of them, they know where OPL 145 day. But if you ask them, what is the name of the community of the OPL? Well, uh, we don't know them, but we just know that OPL 145 is in Calabar. OPL 120 is uh, Atlantic Ocean. OPL 24, eh? That one is somewhere next to Delta. Can you say, what, about, what about the people who did there? We don't know them. They are just caught us. That's why nobody will care. That's why they never felt like they should. Let you have a taste of your own, as opposed to their wealth. Because you are just cutters. If they have their way, they can move all of you away from that place. Eh? The people of Bayosa, sorry, no vex. So, because I know say some now smart thing they make some of you vex, eh? For on top of this uh, uh social media. Bayosa is a small country. If they won't move everybody where the Bayosa come out, where they could come. Where they will construct a block, enter the entire Bayasa, Yenagua, everywhere. Where they move everybody out. I don't think they will. They will need more than uh, maybe fifty or sixty buses to move the entire population of Bayasa out of Bayasa. I'm joking. I'm just saying, like you know, literally. So our art goes to you, and we hope that. Uh, you are all going to see beyond your fear. The one that is a Nigeria imposed fear that except you are part of this Nigeria, you will be nothing. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's what they said. Said that if you leave Nigeria, some people are coming for your oil. And since they are coming for your oil, it's better you stay in Nigeria. And you are there now. Look at it. Uh, our art goes uh, to you. Uh, for those who have survived this so far, make, uh, you know, may God still help you now. But for those of you who are not from that part for now, okay, let's move to uh, the other part, which is uh, the northern Nigeria. Baba, I want to very release uh, 300 and they don't release over 500, uh, either, you know, uh, ISWAP terrorists. Or those that they claim are the link, link with Boko Haram. Yesterday, I was telling you that last night, was I not? That was uh, when we were trying to understand this Kaduna kidnapping, the scripts. You know, we have been digging. So we're trying to understand how the script they go. 
if it's going to be a suspense or if it's going to be a blockbuster. So we've been following the script and it's been as watery as anything. And that was why in our own, using our tentacles like that, trying to pick what we'll sniff around and get to see the truth behind the whole charade. Some of us have done the discover. I mean, some of the suspects say, you see those uh, 230 people that the uh, Nigerian army said they will release because they now discovered that these guys have nothing. Suddenly, surprisingly, they now discover that they don't have any link. Uh, they do not have any link with uh, the, or to the uh, Boko Haram. After they, they said the generous terrorists who demanded for one billion naira to free the kidnapped their school children, 287 of them. So they changed their mind and they just, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, what was that one? Uh, 150 missing children disappeared. They now called them to come and take 137 of them for free. So we are suspecting that. You see those ones, they were released from Kujie like that, right? By the Nigerian army. They might actually be prisoner swap. I didn't know that another court is telling them to release over 300 arrested ISWAP fighters. ISWAP fighters. They're going to release all of them to the public and everybody would have to go and there. Uh, well, do like that and do like that as you are going out every day, you do like that and uh, you pray, you, you know? Because every day the danger continues to increase. And talking about Kaduna, eh? That sunny guy, sunny the clown, seems to have adopted that the children feed as well. Ma show you. Ma show you. Because we have an SSG who's a medical and a deputy governor here is also a medical doctor. So you know have a <laughs> And for those that want to be lawyers, Malay Supermissive here is one of the most successful lawyers in Nigeria. Uh, he's a brilliant lawyer. He's Go for. 
But what I would say here is that uh, all the 137, like I promised them, they will be my children by the grace of God. <laughs> and I've already directed Ubasani Foundation. My foundation has been in existence for the past 16 years. And our focus is on education and healthcare. So I'm not using corner sector my money, but I will use the Ubasani Foundation to look after their education and I will try as much as possible to support them. <laughs> they are very resilient and some of them here want to be medical doctors, some want to be lawyers, some want to be accountants, and few of them want to be soldiers. So in fact one of them, the lady here who uh, four days ago said she wants to be a soldier, even the GOC or mechanized division, General Saraso has already adopted her and he wants to be her mentor. So we thank General Saraso for being her mentor and he wants to be her guide. SSG, who is a medical doctor and the deputy governor, have already volunteered also to guide those that want to be medical doctors. So those that want to be medical doctors are very lucky here because we have an SSG who is a medical and a deputy governor here is also a medical doctor. So we don't have anything. And for those that want to be lawyers, Malay Super Music here. Because we have an SSG who is a medical and a deputy governor here, is also a medical doctor. So we don't have anything. And for those that want to be lawyers, Malay Super Music here is one of the most successful lawyers in Nigeria. Uh, he's a brilliant lawyer. He's also going to guide you by the grace of God. So you don't have any problem. For those that want to be police, you know, we have CP here, very active. The DSS is, the office is also very active. So all of us, collectively, will guide you by the grace of God. And of course, I've uh, already directed that a lot of re renovation and rehabilitation is going on in the community, as well as the school, and even the entire community. Because for me, the community is one of the most peaceful community in Kaduna State. Even when the incident happened, when I met the families, I told them clearly that they should have faith in government, they should believe in our government, but the grace of God will do everything to ensure that they get our children return back safely. Today, the children are back, all of them. We only lost one of the teachers who is a very, very good man. May you sort of peace, Mala Abu Bakar. Uh, because uh, all the children have really missed him. We miss him. Mala Abu Bakar is a very, was a very, very good man. And uh, he guided the, 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 the children. He's one of the most active teachers in the school, but we lost him. So may his gentle sorrows be in peace. Uh, we are going to miss him and the children are missing him also. This is Isa. Isa is a son of Malam Abakan who died in captivity. That's the head teacher of Puriga School. And that is the reason why the government uh, have decided uh, to support the family. And all the children of Malam Abakan will be given scholarship by the government to finish the uh, We are also supporting the family with Tamil and Nara because of what they went through. So that is the son. You can see him. His father died in his presence because the father died because of some medical complications. Uh, that was why he, he lost his life. May you sorrow in peace. So when they when they begin to or should we say when they stop uh, using their children in their evil and devilish political uh, power play, eh? maybe we can begin to see them as humans. But for everybody who knows the entire agenda behind this whole thing, using children in this in this in this manner, 
could only be that of uh, people who are like inherently evil. And that's who they are. So they've released more terrorists and uh, their courts are releasing more terrorists even without trial. Uh, somebody said, oh, well, this, this country, people are not serious in this country. Man. Like, what the hell? Releasing terrorists and then, uh, you know, not, not, not after proper court trial or investigations that finally sort of clear them that they have no connection with the terrorists. Well, you went on, collected one billion naira, eh? plus uh, almost uh, 600 freed terrorists or terror, terror sympathizers. Man, the terrorists in Nigeria, they hit gold in Nigeria, honestly speaking. And that is only because. Uh, those who are in there who are supposed to actually stop this act of terror are those who are benefiting from it and at the end of the day eh? on it on the lighter uh sort of on, on the good side he said they are sponsoring they are giving i mean the children are now his children so he's adopting them and he's going to uh, see to their education Says something about some of them having mental, uh, sort of a mental problem, you know, after coming back from that trauma. So they were going to get, uh, you know, uh, proper medical uh, help for them. Okay. And then uh, the boy that uh, they claim his father died in the custody, uh, he died in his presence and all that. So the, he has been adopted too. It is all politics, all talks, and all that. Okay. While the rest of them, after when the camera is off, all right, you are going to see them elsewhere doing what the northern criminal politicians always love them to do begging. That means after the so drama, the people that will cash out have cashed out. Those that will cash out billions or, also, or millions or hundreds of it, they've done so and they are plotting for the next one. But what do they do with all of that money? You know, Daniel Amokachi? Yeah, Amokachi from Kaduna. Mm -hmm. The former Nigerian uh, Super Eagles footballer. He made a video of those who killed in front of his house for uh, what is believed the Ramadan uh, zakat time where people go on to beg. You know, they need it. They'll go to the house of those who house and beg for arms during Ramadan or, you know, zakat shah, arms giving. He made a three minutes video in front of his house, a four minutes video. i show you. All those people were actually like uh, looting Nigeria from northern Nigeria. Where are they spending the money? And who are they spending the money on? Allah don't want to could be lie the Aki in the name of the Chinkafani Akiraba ten ten kg Akiraba make a moment they get a Kamudu Okay Kotakas. She needed a matin kg. Do want to lie in the Kujaga needing them? Lie in Matani or Banda Lion Mother. Yeah, lie in Matani or no. She be lie. Do go on the lie in Hagani. Banda Allah want to say, Yawa Mutan and the Siki lie. Kuma yanzu gudun da ake yi dinan ana gudu ne za a je a shiga layi layin yana can baya daga inda na dauko shi ana ta gudu ne yanzu a je a shiga layi 
ana bi ya kawo security gidan Amokochi Amokachi a Kaduna gidan Amokachi nan ne ake yin wannan abu tun da safe karfe 5 aka ji wannan layin nan ana shiga ana fita ana karba ana nan da shi wa ana fita ana shiga ana karba suna fita ana shiga ana ana karba ana fita ana jan layi an sa da yan banga da sojoji a bakin gate shine abin da ake tun da safe karfe 5 ake wannan layin ana karba ana tafiya sadaka yake ka dubi irin wannan abin da yake wannan abin da yake don Allah Allah ya biya shi Allah ya biya shi Allah ya samu wadan shin sa kuma Allah ya ba mu yanda za mu yi kaman haka Allah ya ba mu yanda za mu yi kuma kaman haka ya fito ya tara kudi ya dake kudin sa ya sai abinci ana rabawa mutane ya sa jami'an zaro a tsare a bilayi kowa ya shiga ya karba wanda ya karba ya tsallaka titi kawai ya je ya kunna nan fadullahi ne daga kwana an yi kwanan gidan sa kenan yanzu nan an zo kwana da yake nan duk wancan wani layi ne aka yi kwana sanda aka kuma kure shi ga nan nan layin nan da suka approaching wanda suka approaching gidan kenan yanzu nan wanda yake layin nan kan ya kusan shiga shine wannan nan suke zazzanne su ne an kira za su shiga ha gan su nan wanda suke zazzanne nan ga nan kofar gidan za a shiga kowa ya shiga ya karbi abun sa ga nan layin maza in guragu ne ba sa layi kawai sun tara su kawai sai ya shiga nan kuma layin maza ne shine nan layin maza ne kun gani jama'a a masa addu'a duka dan sana alkhairi duka Allah ya biya masa Allah ya cika masa burin sana alheri wannan duka layin maza ne ka gani iya ganin ka kuma 10 kg ne ake ba ruwa mutane suna karba suna murna suna sa albarka 10 kg ne wannan layin maza ne shi ma yazo ya yi kwana haka kamar yanda kuka gani yi kwanan nan ya yi kwana ne yana tafiya yana tafiya wani waje ya shiga wani layi shi ma wannan layin wata kila ina ga sai an kure shi shine abun da Allah ya nuna mu a Kaduna a ga layin ya yi kwana ha ya zo karshe shine abun da ake ciki Allah da ya biya shi Allah ya biya shi kaga wanda suka samu ga shi nan sun karba suna farin ciki suna murna suna addu'a suna sa'a Somebody said is that for one person's house of course now you see the corners yeah it was like the the women are supposed to be on the other side because men and women can stay in the same place is haram so the men the women on this side the first side then the men on the other side did you see that call they are all going into a place to collect a 10 kg bag of rice did you see that yeah that is why the criminals in their politics will love to keep uh, stealing so that more and more people like that can always come and, i mean you know they can come around once or twice in a month to come and beg for food for now that is uh, under the cover of uh, under the co cover of uh, ramadan so you see that crowd that went to a one person's house one person's house uh, do you think if that is how uh, it is all over the world uh, if, it, if you, you think if that is how it is in america or in the uk or in other uh, you know advanced uh, democracies all over the world do you think uh you will see anybody with genuine money that they will tell you that uh, they made their money genuinely do you think anybody that is making their money genuinely telling you that Allah is blessing them is the grace of God? People who are really running businesses, that's the way they do business, where they earn legitimate money. Do you think that person can survive feeding people like that every time? Yeah? That's where they make legit money. Somebody who is working profit and loss business. And not all these ones like, uh, it's the grace of God. See how, is how you take that. Well, it's God. We thank God. Uh, God, God has been very merciful. But you are a corrupt criminal. And that is why the only place you can see something like that is a contraption, the hell hole called Nigeria, where criminals are your role models. It's not possible. Here you get.
There is no country run on uh, freebies. And since the criminals in Nigeria knows that the poorer you are, the more submissive you are going to be. Do you know that? Uh, before I left Nigeria, we had this saying that uh, if you don't get money now, another person behavior, you're going to behave. Oh, but the low, low, it will only wallow mama who. You want me to tell you about that? Yeah, we have a saying, and I believe they are still saying it in Nigeria today. That is why one of my brothers told me that uh, they are not sure I'm going to make it in life. Because I am poor, I can't get stubbornness. How can you be poor and be stubborn? Which kind of which How can you be poor and say you want to prove a point? What people know they prove points? For being poor alone, eh? for no reason, you could offend people. Eh? You don't understand what, oh, okay. I'll put a break uh, a little bit on uh, what I am saying there, okay? So I want to tell you this about what, uh, what poverty does, okay? Number one, if you are a poor person, there are some places that you will go to, eh? and if anything goes missing, you are a suspect. Like it's natural. Even you, you will suspect yourself. You say, who, could have, who could have stolen my phone? You will come to check your body and say, oh, you, you, haven't seen any, you haven't seen this person. Though. But you see everybody in the room. You look at yourself. They are looking for a phone. You are pressing your body and see if you took somebody's phone. Meanwhile, you did not take anybody's phone. Though. And suddenly everybody there will just be looking at you like, I say, what? 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 Why is everybody looking at me? I did not take any phone. Though. Come and search me. That is... Uh, what poverty can do to you. Hmm? Poverty, which these criminals have sort of uh, codified, they've hacked it, they've weaponized it, and then they will use it against uh, you. So if you are poor, you're not supposed to get opinion. Who won't use your opinion? Eh? So you have opinion, you have idea. This, this is not like practically true, sure you get. I'm talking about the way they look down on you when you are poor. You will know now, you will know that you are poor. You know, when you begin to hear the rat in your house, they gossip about you. Look at them. Very foolish, very, very poor people. They are not cooking this evening again. I went to the kitchen, the whole place is very cold. They did not, they, they are not cooking. Very, very poor family. You know that kind of poverty where you go poor, maybe say the rat in your house, go they, they go to gossip about you. So, okay. And when you do like that, they say, hey, leave us alone. No, no, don't they, don't they, don't they, don't they pass your, your, what do you call your, frust your frustration on us? That kind of poverty level, eh? eh? So poverty is so, so, so bad, right? That the criminals in Nigeria that have weaponized it, they know have, they have a way around it enough that they want more of you there. The more you are there, the kind of powerful they feel like. So, when you are poor, you are a suspect in everywhere, and that is why when uh, when, when anybody make you when, if somebody makes you feel like poverty is not a bad thing, it's a very bad thing. You know they get opinion. They will tell you, say you get you get opinion. You know you know make you know take and become rich. He yeah? says, "I have an idea. I'm going to keep your idea. idea. Use it for yourself." Have you ever been in that situation before, where there are people day everybody day they are talking? Ah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you are like, "I have an idea. Oh, I have an idea." Is it? Use it for yourself. It is poverty. Yes, now, like, I'm, I'm being serious, but, like, it may not really show, show, show. She you get, but they will say, ah, eh, you don't get money, you don't get, you are poor. You the talk, say you get idea. Idea will you need. What is that idea in the head of a poor man? Let's be honest. If your idea will you have a brain, eh? How much is your idea? Eh? And they'll tell you that, eh? Uh, 
if you are, you are a poor man, you they advise rich man. Are you all right? He said, but I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to advise him not to say, Papa, why you don't use that idea and make money for yourself? Okay. So, that was me, oh, when we say back uh, in Nigeria then. And then, uh, you know, if you have been out of that space, number one, you will never want to be back there. And number two, when you now see how people within that bracket are being treated by those who are taking advantage of them, it actually hurts more. I say, is that, is that how they treated me when I was in that place? Say yes now. Eh. Was I that? Was that? Eh, you know, it's like asking your parents, say, Baba, she, are we that poor when I did that place? We say, we do, as a, a poor gun, you ah, we are very poor, kitty gun, you when our grace of God, we did take our family. She said, really? Yeah, yeah, we are very poor. So, is that why nobody respected us like that? Say, who did respect poor, poor person? Now, the poor people, they get the best ideas. But unfortunately, somehow, somehow, they just make them poorer. So you have this thing that, uh, you know, poverty that will make people just to hate you. You don't do anything, no. Don't say you do anything, no. You don't do anything, no. But once you walk in there, they just be like, oh, my God. Who is this? What's this? What is this? It is poverty. And there are those who kind of, they are like the poverty merchants. They create more and more and drum dump people inside the, prayer, the basket of poverty. They come to now, they tell you, say, God loves the poor. I bet you are with me. May God not love me like that. I don't want that kind of love. Tell it, tell it, if anybody tell you, say, God love poor people, tell them, say, well, if they're happy to be, they should go ahead. You don't want that kind of love because it's deceitful. So talking about the criminals who are enjoying that and then uh, keeping everybody in there. Uh, I mean, it works for them until you probably choose this, that uh, you don't want to be that anymore. And that would be a choice. That would be your own choice. Poverty when she got to that say, ah, today at uh, Ikeja Airport, eh? for Muritala Muhammad Airport in Lagos, I think. All right. So something happened. And what was that? Ordinary Nigerians are being wherever you are, they know where they, you know, they know their own boundaries. So it's between the being Gadania's uh, son as, and then uh, KFC in Lagos. That one happened today. Oh. oh, no, sorry, it happened yesterday. And they took action today. I don't care. It shall happen. And what happened? They said KFC, that is a KFC outlet that is operating inside the international airport, boldly. Put a poster on their wall that says no wheelchair allowed. Can you even believe that in this 21st, 2024, 21st century? Oh. But Nigeria is a lawless place. Maybe they don't care about who you be. They are building buildings right now. Like they are having building approvals in all over the place. But when you see some of them, they do not have any of this uh, wheelchair disability access and they don't care. You don't see where people go to say, are you sure say you know if you walk or you just like to sit down on top of that wheelchair? A typical Nigerian negatement will ask you, or doorman will ask you on your wheelchair. I say, are you going to carry the chair inside? Because there is nowhere to, we don't have a, you know what I mean? But this one was like people who are already, because I am very sure what transpired today as much as we all know that uh, discrimination apps, in fact, I've actually covered a few news around that, right? Where uh, Nigerians uh, with uh, disability, you know, they're like ability and disability uh, and all of that kind of campaigns to encourage uh, public buildings in Nigeria to at least modernize and build access for the wheelchair uh, users, okay? 
And that never seems to really be a thing until Benga Daniel's uh, disabled son wants a deaf, you know, tasty fried chicken or some chicken nuggets and chips. I don't know, maybe he was uh, live, traveling out of Nigeria or he just came into Nigeria. I don't know. But something transpired inside the restaurant. Yeah, inside the, the KFC. I want to shut the KFC down. They don't shut them down now. Airports. Something will say you. People go talk to you somehow. You go say you're they, you are, you are having a... Is there a that thing again that uh, when somebody says something to you and you're having a breakdown? No, is, is it a breakdown? Sometimes all these English, they are just too many. They are recent English, okay? There's some uh, English uh, uh, words that uh, sort of uh, resonate with what I'm trying to say to you right now before they can make any meaning to you. You know that thing that you will say, ah, you have hurt my feeling, and I will just start crying because... Yeah, because you just told me there that uh, I did not uh, brush my beard very well. You know that kind of thing that I would say, you hurt my feeling. Eh? For example, if you tell me now that, my ego, why don't you go and shave? And I can start crying. Like, why would you have to say that? You just hurt my feeling. You know, that kind of snowflake thing like, eh? That's not regular with a regular Nigerian who is kind of like facing all of whatever things that has been thrown at them. But they hurt Benga Daniel's son's feelings and they paid for it. All right? Here, Jibola. Hold on. This is Jibola. No. Listen to me. The difference between Airport Wuchia and his best time Wuchia is that this is how he gets around in life. He doesn't have a choice. So if you are bringing a policy now, and if you are the person that's telling me, wait, if you're hello, wait, wait, hello, wait, please wait. drop your phone. Why? Why are you snapping me? I'm not snapping you. I'm hello, recording what you're saying. So what are you recording? Hello, listen to me. You said it now. Please don't shout at me. And don't, don't just speak. And tell her not to record me. Why would she be recording me? So, 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 so you're telling me that. You don't hello, please hold on. Hello, please. Record it. Record it. I am. I do have to say you could have handled the situation better in terms of your first coming. I would, but you wouldn't allow me. Okay. But so please, can you explain to me what the issue is with my husband coming into KFC? Hold on. Okay. Look, it wasn't an issue. Okay. That's... When you guys came in, yeah. we could have told you guys that which is not allowed. Okay. And even in our guy. All our people, they are aware that the guy that pushed the wheelchair. Okay, okay. All our people know that the wheelchair is not allowed. Okay, in KFC? Yes. Only KFC? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, about other places, place. but KFC. I wasn't working here from the one I was transferred here. Uh -huh. When I was transferred, well, part of what they were telling me, they told me which year is not So, uh, the lady probably, the uh, member of staff is new. And she was explaining to them that, uh, well, I'm, I just got transferred here. And what they are trying to tell you right there is that uh, wheelchair is not allowed in this place. And Debola, what's, what's, what's that guy's name again? Debola, yeah. Debola Daniel. That's Binga Daniel's son. Who was there? His wife was like, is, is it true that my husband couldn't use uh, his wheelchair by coming in there? And I was like, well, it is the policy. Policy? Is that new? Baba, if Nami did there, they shouted, What kind of policy is this? What kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, nah, for Kiloting, Pekirikiri, you will not go, Yes, it may go to enter Nigeria. Because now I will wait till they take announcement and arrive at that. They will arrest me. And that is why some said that if uh, the uh, children of families, of uh, governors or president, uh, vice president, and the rest of them, if they, if they were kidnapped, if they have been kidnapped, or a state governor kidnapped or killed by terrorists, that this terror will end before you can even imagine it. It will end like within, within days, it will end. So, Unless it happens to them, it's just we are on our own, okay? So, but it's good enough that it's happening to them, and I bet uh, Debola called his dad. Hello, daddy. So what happened? My son 
You won't believe it today, what I saw today. I am shaking right now. So what happened? Lute, yeah. You know, in Papa now, Senator now. You won't believe that KFC said I couldn't use my wheelchair. Really? Give me Kayamo's number. Here. Hello, Kayamo. How are you? Where are you? Are you back? You have to, even if you have to, like, uh, post it on Twitter right now, you need to. They did not allow my son to use uh, his wheelchair. At, uh, inside the, how, is that even a thing? How is that possible? It's, ah, Otumba, Emma Benu, so sorry. That's what they do to destroy this government. This is what they do to spread the name of this government. Eh? Otumba, don't worry, we are suspending. We are suspending the KFC straight up. I mean, if it's going to allow all, I mean, all of our people with uh, uh, any disability uh, or a view for them to be able to use their wheelchairs, at least from their airports, in their airports, if this one is going to bring that change, eh, then it is, a, it is a win for all of us disabled who have ability in disability because there is always ability in disability by the way and you can use what you what you have to get what you want so yeah it's sort of a, a mixed one right so i hope uh, uh using your wheelchair for easy access uh, to shops and to offices and to homes uh become a thing in that place because baba wheelchair or people with disability in this part of the world, right? The headache, the restraint, the constraint, the health, the, the health challenges of their disability. These are enough for people to actually deal with. Not how I'm going to roll myself into a, a shop, or I'm going to roll myself into a, an office for an appointment, and now I'm going to roll myself into a space and buy something, or even give myself a refreshment without being looked at and say, as if to say I'm a burden. I don't have to be a burden to any of you if those facilities are provided. You know that? Well, okay. I don't stay for Scotland. You don't stay. So I talk like this with this Scotland. But now somebody don't put them for trouble for Niger now. Because if you think it's nothing, so it's a win for uh, the people with uh, disability. Yesterday, you heard the news that uh, Aburi, conducted his own party convention. That is the Labour Party convention. Well, I did say I do not want to help uh, uh, the gang do the job of uh, fearing you down. But there are some truths that you have to possibly not shy away from. One of them is the fact that Aburi seems to be actually acting alone. And not just acting alone, it seems to be acting like somebody will get something to hide. I hate it when somebody has something to hide. You know what I mean? Like, we all have something to hide, though. But anything we are going to do, maybe say, I don't say if it, if it becomes public, eh? And like this, I go to work I won't even do it at all. But he's got something to hide. And uh, it seems that uh, he is uh, naked in himself even more. So, yeah, they told him not to probably do any convention the way he wanted to. In fact, he shouldn't participate. He's got too much uh, baggages. Well, like he went ahead, though. He elected himself, and now he was supposed to be inaugurated as a you know, as re-elected chairman of the Labour Party, right? But that seems not to go, not going to happen. I don't think so. Because from the circular sub, I mean, in circulation, circular in circulation, right? It is from the... Uh, Labour Party Board of Trustees. They rejected that convention. How could you do a convention where your OB is not there? What happened to all your elected officials? What happened to your OB, I mean, the obedient? Come on, man. Like, what's going on? So these are the questions people were asking, like, what's going on? Why is all this? Why is Abure doing this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so it's obvious that, uh, see, there is more to all of this, okay? And with time, you will know more. But for what it is now, uh, it seems that uh, the Labour Party has gone the way of a PDP APC. And if you are an obedient as well, watching me right now, you might need to begin to really look into your priorities and then, uh, yeah, you need to. Because as it is right now, eh? 
uh na you can't wake somebody that is uh, pretending to be sleeping now person when they sleep that they wake up wake up wake up you do not wake somebody that is pretending to be sleeping a lot is coming out already and yeah from the part of the uh lop in anugu those who used Joby wave eh? to have the, they mean, to get their own seat at the table I think they are done. Some of them are done already. In Enugu, the entire six or should, how many are they in Enugu? The six House of Assembly members of Labour Party decamped straight to PDP. They didn't blink. And I think they should lose their seat, Abi. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> anyway, Shato, the old Wahala it seems that uh, the whole house of card is already falling apart. And the question some are asking now is, should Obi jump ship or stay to fix an already rotten situation? I'll make it even more rotten. I don't know. I just saw people asking the questions elsewhere there, right? Like, okay, what are we, what should do? I will help you ask others when I have the chance. Now that is that I do not want to go deeper in that. Okay, so on the other one as well, this is uh, this one is uh, a tricky one, but I'm going to uh, keep some of it to myself until I have enough. I know enough until I have enough to show to you, so that what I know with what I have to show you, the both of them can come straight to you, and then uh, yeah, you get the clarity that you should get. So I'm going to keep it to myself. Last night, we couldn't take calls, but we will take tonight, in fact, a longer one. It was meant to be the People's Parliament, remember? But we can't do People's Parliament anymore this moment. Uh, but we can take calls. So I'm going to pop you on a short hold. Now, when I get back, I will take calls. Don't go anywhere. At least not yet. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much uh, for uh, staying tuned. And there's something I'm going to kind of say too, because somebody's mentioned that today, and it's not the first time people are saying that to me. And I feel like I'm going to say it here now. And, you know, I will let you sort of uh, 
Don't see me react to it before the calls start connecting. Okay. So uh, I was on a TikTok earlier this evening. And one of uh, the members of this uh, temple, a disciple from here, who lives in the UK, is currently in Nigeria, where is uh, vacationing. I will just use the word vacationing or holidaying, right? And this individual said that he was in Lagos most of the time. He was shuttling between Lagos and Benin. And he was around talking to people. He said, he spoke to a few people, group of people, you know, like, individuals and group of people and all that to ask them about the situation in Nigeria and what they what their uh, thoughts are on the breakup of Nigeria especially understanding this so sort of uh, uh, mismatch uh you know injustice corruption terrorism and all of these things shall we like almost to his own shock, right? He said, not that people don't know what is going on. They do know what's going on. But according to them, they are not really interested or they've not had enough or never interested in Biafra or uh, Yoruba nations and all of that. Like on this photo, oh, this is an individual report here. Yeah. He said, right there in Bini, where there was an Igbo man's uh, shop, the Biafra, very massive uh, electronic shop. So he went there, did some shopping, spent like about 38 million. He was about to spend about 38 million, where he's ordering massive, uh, uh, you know, supply for his own projects in Bini. So while they were like putting everything together, talking about uh, payment, so they were kind of talking about payment. Their conversation, like conversation, now changed to, man, this country, yeah, the best thing. No, I think he said he asked the guy, and he said, Ah, Baba, are you are you also kind of uh, supporting the Biafra? Because this country, yeah. We can see that this country is going nowhere, like kind of that kind of conversation. Uh -huh. Oh, he said this guy just flare up. Yeah, an Igbo man. Okay, Igbo businessman in Benin. He just flare up that my brother don't mind those noisemakers on social media. There's nothing like Biafra or wherever. Now the Kano should go, go, go and go and sit down. He came from UK, came here to come and put everybody in trouble. Eh? This guy was like, are you, are you serious? Something that was supposed to be like gist, too, like jealous gist and just talk gist randomly. And this guy was like, he just went on and on and on and no more. He said, well, you know what? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not buying anything again, Baba. I'm so sorry. He said, oh, we are one Nigeria. We are Nigeria. Nobody does time for nobody have time for all of that too. In Lagos, again, the crowd he met, you know, don't that, that doesn't mean that you have to generalize. I'm not generalizing now. Don't generalize, please. Okay. Well, this is not the first time I'm hearing this. And also, this is not the first time I am hearing that. Now us where they are abroad, now us they get uh, Stomach uh, headache hmm? for Nigeria matter, and because of that, some of them have learned that that all of now we did diaspora because of what you know that is going on in Nigeria. Eh? You are the one. They said now we they react like say everyone fall. Nigerians are hungry. People are suffering. Eh? What kind of thing is this? This, this the people are dying. Eh? The people are hungry. How can you be doing this to people? This is so wrong. You are killing children. You are kidnapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say now us where they are abroad. Now us they carry this wahala for head. 
to them in Nigeria. It is not that deep, my ego. This country is going to break up soon. We saw this. Yes, yes, I agree with you. I agree with you, my ego. I agree with you. I agree. This country, people are tired. The people are tired of this country. They want, they want to have their own country. Yes, my ego. Yes. Yes, yes. Very, very true, my brother. You are doing a great job, my ego. Great job. You know, this country, everybody is tired. It's not the first time. <laughs> it's not. But just because I know that there are also genuine people. I'm talking about genuine people who actually really want things done differently. They want it done differently and they want it done sincerely and honestly. They believe it's going to benefit everyone, but they don't see themselves, well, they see themselves as people who don't really have what it takes to challenge these people. They are there in Nigeria. So I'm not going to pretend that everybody is just kind of taking advantage of us. Here you get. Because sometimes you see those people where you just send video, my ego's video to. They have seen my ego before. Are you with me? They have seen my ego. You see those people you are sending my video to in Nigeria? They have seen me. But to them, they this one no go get hypertension because of Nigeria. Back in Nigeria, this person said he has no idea, he has no clue, he has no way they are doing it. Or somehow, somehow, their bars are always filled to the brim. I even tried to say, but Baba, you don't say Nigeria, don't be say. They buy a food. No means say everybody they buy a drink. Now, people where they come, they come drink free drink, plenty pass. Because if you will just come back from, the, from abroad now, from the UK, you are in Nigeria, you have three, four boys with you. You take them to a joint and you tell them to, to take whatever they want to drink. Now, they are drinking. That they point and kill for fish. They chop uh, pepper soup. And everybody, whoever walks into the bar, will see like six people drinking. The entire table covered. That no means say everybody waited that table. No, they see shake yo. But this person was like, no, my ego. I still don't think as as eh. Okay. Adiola, are you there? Chairman, I'm there. Oh. Baba. Baba, I just say, hopefully I'll make it very quick one. I'm not really surprised about that guy's account in terms of what he, he encountered in Nigeria. They say we are people's the responses with emotion, to... Now we the overreact. Yes. And since we yes, are reacting yes, like course. that, they just say, yeah, it's true. <laughs> we have not eaten all along. Eh? It's this true. Country. At least you know I'm not. Do you, know that? you know that this country is not easy, eh? Please, eh? I, I want to play this movies of my child. <laughs> and you know that it's true, eh? My brother, <laughs> God will save you. Send your account. <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I, I'm not surprised. You know, I expect that kind of... Um, in a response because you know even I, when i have friends that come over from nigeria and you know we are, we have that conversation you know the, at the end of the day i feel as if i'm the one that is much more bothered you know rather than them so i'm not really shocked that um the responses you know that he got during his trip you know you know you know he was did so not meet up. himself and he said ah yeah how you going? Mayugun, yes, of course. I am so surprised of course, yeah. that the reaction of people I meet on ground here, he no correlate yeah. with waiting with the talk at all. No, it doesn't. Even I was speaking to a friend of mine just yeah. not too long ago, some some few, few minutes, you know, and he attested to me that the bag of rice has gone up to eighty nine thousand naira. You know, you know that people are even struggling to, you know, buy Gary, to drink Gary. That Gary is like gold now. Um, you know, my goal, to be honest with you, I'm not shocked. You know, if people are, if people have been raised in that kind of environment and that's all they know, you know, it's hard for them to see, you know, how they can get out. Yeah, it's hard. It's very hard. So, so, so people have been conditioned. That's what they know. That is. The exact thing, you know, people are in captivity. Yeah, yes, they are moving. Yes, they are going up and down. But every day, they are still in captivity. You know, and I'll probably, probably just circle back to what I said the last time we had the conversation about the foreign remittances. You know, I can't still get over that wall whereby people that purportedly, you know, that outside the country, 
are more productive than people that live in that country. So you can't really compare numbers wise, right? So if you take all the Nigerian population or people in diaspora, you know, it's a fraction, it's a, you know, it's a small fraction compared to the potential of I, I people was that, somewhere, you know, right? Adeola, yeah. where somebody said, I, I, I'm not going to believe he said it, okay? That Oyama guy, the guy of a hairpiece, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Both know. Said, you know, somebody earning 200,000 in Nigeria is living a better life than somebody earning 2,000 pounds in the UK, right? Yeah, I saw the clip. Oh, I saw I, the clip. I, I have, I've been looking for the video until I see a video I saw the he clip. said it, okay? I'm not going to believe it. I saw the clip. Right? I, I, oh, you know I, why I actually I, mentioned I it? I heard it. You know I why heard I mentioned it? Well, that, I just right? looked away from it, yeah. Whether he said it or not, there are some section of Nigerians that believe that uh, through as well, too. Do you know? Yeah. That they believe that yeah. uh, if you are earning 2,000 pounds in the UK, somebody living in Nigeria earning 200 or 500,000 Naira has a better life than you. And they believe it. Yeah, of course. They, you know, I, I, I heard the clips and I was disappointed, you know, in what he, in, he, so he said. He actually said it. Yes, he did. He did. But... I think for context, it would be good to watch the entire video I because I don't want to judge him. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't want to just extract some few seconds of that statement, which I saw. Because and now in the, the yeah. UK, right? And give yes. somebody 500,000 Naira from his 2K. Somebody with 500,000 Naira in course. Nigeria cannot dash somebody 2,000 pounds from his own uh, money. Can he? No, no. You know, what he said is really baffling you know I, I i wouldn't expect someone that does international business and yes. has an airline you know to reason that way I, I think maybe nigeria has got him yeah <laughs> to be honest with you I, I i maybe nigeria has got him as well too because that's what you know it my go when you go to nigeria you, you will find it very very Troubling that people think that way, and that is the result of everything. So even if Oyama is not, if is prone to that kind of thinking because of that environment, then what else do you expect? Everybody, you know, people that should be intellectuals, that you know, people that do world business, are not immune to this Nigerian craze. They're not immune to it. So the moment you get into that place and you stay there and you mingle mingle for a while, you will lose all sense of reasoning. And that is what is exhibiting. So it's quite of a shame. You no, know, not not quite. A, it's a huge shame that he can talk. You know, someone on two thousand pounds has has a bit of wrong way or leg room to 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 you know. To I wanted to start open there, mobility right? before you touch your two thousand pounds. After, I mean, if you are earning two thousand pounds, he can still that, get more right? skills. Yes, yeah, so, no, we even, that anyway, 2K, yeah, Michael, yeah, Chairman, even that two K, Michael, even that two K, even that two K, if he increases his skill. He still has upward mobility. So the next five years you come and meet him, he's not that two K. He's two K. He's two K has a inflation that right? would destroy his salary. Like, they are like basic, right? Especially for them uh, in Nigeria. Okay, number one, uh, they said that uh, uh, ninety. What do you call it? I think they said that uh, ninety-one percent of their population does not even have uh, five hundred thousand in their bank. All right, to start with, so for you to even name that, that must be some level, okay? So, another thing is this somebody who is earning 2,000 pounds in the UK, we not, mm. I mean, they have NHS, okay? Yeah, of course. So, they have uh, they can call the ambulance. 24 hours electricity, they have yeah. the fast, fastest internet. That's where the upward mobility comes in, though, for whatever they can still do later. Yeah, okay, sure you get right, yeah, but yeah. they, they have, can retrain, uh, yeah, they have uh, acquire skills and move up. You, you get what I mean? So they, they, they have security. Let's put that too, right? And mm. then uh, this person where they earn 500,000, they will need to buy generator. They will need to provide their own electricity. They will need to provide their own health care. They will need to provide their own education for their children as well. Uh, provide their own water. And on and on and on like that, right? That... Uh, what uh, you know, the, the sort of safety nets behind, I mean, for somebody with uh, 2,000 pounds and somebody with uh -huh. 500 pounds existing in these two different countries and these two realities, right? If a billionaire uh -huh. lives that way, then think about uh, how all the elite actually thinks. If indeed, uh, chairman, 
you know, I think we should capture this whole conversation into one box. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that when you live in that contraption, there's a way it robs you from every sense of awareness and, and wisdom. You just find yourself acting like, acting outside wisdom. It's a mystery because I've had, see, Michael, I've had friends that also have also been baffled when they get there. And they see our mates that, you know, have degrees, they have, you know, exposure, you know, they've been out, they are making good money. But that reasoning, that Oyema's reasoning is still there. It's still there. It's still there. It's a mystery. I don't know what, why it happens, why people that have seen the world do international business know what it is, you know, whereby people, you know, you know, be able to, you know, climb in society, have upward mobility, even with your black skin in this country. Yes. If you fight really hard, there is still upward mobility. Time and chance will still happen for you. You will still earn more, earn more if you if you develop yourself, if you Absolutely. have that hunger, not fire in your belly. Uh-huh. If you have fire in your belly, you will still develop. But in that country, even with the fire in your belly, you have to struggle against all odds. But I mean, you know, even, it, you it, it's like, say, even when you are already trying to uh, get over it, their their economic uh, criminality can just happen. Devalue whatever all your gains mm-hmm. are. Exactly. And See, all that gain that is could, not even what compares you to greatness. Eh? Yeah. They can just have it, and as you go back to come again, and you start trying to pick up again. Eh? A country that once had a fragile middle class. Eh. If, you know, because I think during good looks, Jonathan's time, time tenure, there was there was this new middle that was forming and becoming, you know, much more stronger. But all of us, so I think the middle class started with Obasanjo, with, with, with a, you know, you know, um, the base of the middle class was becoming stronger and larger. People were, you know, we had brain gain. People were moving in mass. Even so, time, I thought maybe I, I will also like move back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Money, building houses. So, Some of them are actually so it, getting yeah. money to start businesses. I remember exactly. that. Exactly. All of that. There was, you know, all of that opening of all the shop rights. Shop rights was opening. Yeah. We had shopping malls coming. So there was foreign capital. There was, you know, there was foreign investment. There was private equity going to into Nigeria based on those drivers of the population and all that kind of stuff. So that was good, but a very fragile middle class. And the fragile middle class was exposed after Gulag Jonathan's tenure, and all of a sudden, everything just went downhill. So in a country whereby there is no more, there's no more middle, there's no, there's no more middle. Oh, there's, there's no middle. There's no middle anywhere. And everyone is dropping. Down. Even from that hall, people are dropping. Da, cha, 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 like, people uh, are dropping. Mm-hmm. And people that choose not to drop. You know, people, you know, I think... When you put it into context, the it, it is the most you know you know n- not the most but the highly skilled Nigerians are living in you know in, you know a mass, so, and that for me, uh, uh, and that for me is the you know is the bad part whereby people that are well skilled, people that are heavily skilled that can transform a nation, people that can create jobs, you know, create wealth, are leaving the shores of Nigeria, and you are left with politicians just making rubbish statements. So. Oyema statement, I, I don't think we need to compare it or even talk about Oyema statement. I think he has shot himself in the foot by coming you know, on live TV. Yeah, it it was flying, a private conversation. His airline is flying London soon. So we see how many... Yeah, yeah. He actually said 200,000. I mean, they used 500,000, though. So you get. So let's see how many people earning <laughs> 200,000 in Nigeria that will actually be able to fly Oyema's aircraft to London. Even 200,000 Naira, they can't even apply for visa because I'm sure the visa requirements would be more than 20,000 naira in, in your bank account. You know, you must have, yeah, a, you know, a large you know, multi- thing about Nigeria elites or the middle class, they will call them sometimes mm-hmm. or the upper class, eh? Baba, they mm-hmm. are so, so, so selfish. They're selfish. They're very selfish. Yeah. They're very selfish. Exactly. They're very selfish. Because if you look at people that are traveling in Nigeria, my gun, if you do the math, yeah. people that leave the shores of Nigeria, if you, if you, if we are all sincere, people that leave Nigeria, is just a tiny fraction of that population. Is a tiny. So if we're to go by, I don't believe on, I, I don't believe our population because we never had a proper census. So if we're to go by the population no that you know that they dashed us, you know, with five five percent annual you know population growth rate, if we go by that statistics, right, only a tiny fraction 
of that country travels or have the means to travel are the ones that you know even the ones that travel maybe they will also all the money and leave so in the real sense the elites are the ones leaving the country if you do the real maths and okay let's remove all the noise or people travel out the country if you look at people that comfortably travel it's only a tiny fraction a very tiny fraction very tiny fraction compared to 400 million if we were if exactly you know you can't even travel if you were going to leave nigeria with 200,000 in your account no I, I don't think british embassy will listen to you, you must have way more multiples of 200k to even even is see my goal it's so the reason why nigerians don't get it is because as a black person you can't see the world with a green passport you can't mm. you it, you cannot see the travel world with your green you can't passports. see the world you can't you can't because you'll be you'll be bogged down with visa applications but if you have a british passport you have an american passport that's what you call travel travel inequality Ooh, not a lot of black people that understand that just, travel inequality you just mentioned there eh? you can't even a, travel was, ah, wait i'm gonna tell you this story before you go right so i was invited to america last year okay so mm -hmm. i have uh I, I don't have british passport yet all right so and i know i'm gonna miss that until that happens okay However, mm -hmm. uh, I applied, so they now said they are not going. To, this is what the American embassy said. Oh, you remember now? <laughs> said they, they are not convinced that I'm going to come back. To you. Imagine. Okay, you get now. So then you know, wow. somebody now said, somebody said, why are you going? Because I came here as well to say I probably mm -hmm. just didn't take it serious when I should. Okay, I should have. Mm -hmm. So somebody said that you should, uh, yeah. in your house, you have a. Uh, Three Britons there, and, and it's true. Okay, mm -hmm. I've got a job of British here mm -hmm. in my house. However, mm -hmm. somebody said I should have packed all the passport of all the kids. Eh? Yes, that's what I should have done. My own, on, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Under pata pata, and put their yeah. own. I said, but yeah. I'm the one applying for visa. They don't need visa, and the person was like, they don't, eh, you don't need that. Just they'll grant that. you. Put, they'll them. grant you because your family are traveling. They'll grant you instantaneously. I was like, really? They'll grant you. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, because if you. Within uh, a space of uh, uh, 10 minutes, right? We put mm -hmm. on for the renewal of the passport of the ones whose uh, who's, uh, passports have expired. And then we, we started mm -hmm. for uh, year one day and all that. But actually, mm -hmm. yeah, the whole thing within 10, 15 minutes, right? We've already gotten mm -hmm. uh, the confirmation for, for when they are going to get their new ones back. So talking about exactly. your green passport, I could have seen the world, even living in the UK, I still get uh, shot out of the world to see the world. I don't even want to take mm -hmm. that passport to any embassy and say, I need your visa. I want to go to this or that. Like, So I can't really see the world with my green passport. Adiola? You can't. You can't. You know, it's, it's, it's impossible, you know. Well, as a do person at home. All over the world for it. Too. But what you, what you mean by this statement is just to say, that I'm in Nigeria now, and I have green passport, so does not give me. You can't see the world. No, you can't pick up your pass, your green passport, and tomorrow in America, you have to do some months of visa application. You can't pick up your green passport and you're off, off to Spain, you know, because you want to book a flight tonight. You can't do that. There's travel inequality for black people, especially in that people holding that green passport. So I, I, you know, I think the I, summary of this is that the summary of this is that the people that bear the cost of that failed states that also bear the cost, the indirect and direct cost are people living in diaspora. Because mm. you would know, you bear, you bear the cost. Like, at some point, I didn't want to call a British passport. I said, no, 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 I'm a Nigerian guy. I don't need British passports. My wife was telling me, oh, go and That's get it, you know, friend, for travel. Yeah, I, I was arguing, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need. I don't need. I've never shown interest in this or this while, but I'm interested. And I, I went to Italy. I went to Italy with the family and they stopped me for some odd reason. You know, for some stupid odd reason, you know, and my wife said, No, you can't stop in my family. Your so, wife and, your, and, and they allow me to go, yeah? and they allow me to go. I was still bragging that I don't need British passports. I was still bragging that I was still bragging it. I was saying, No, I don't need I don't need it. The second time I, I applied to Spain, for some reason, they don't they were delaying me. So, on the day of my flight, I went to Spanish embassy, I went to go and shout on them there. I, 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 I declared clear craze there. They started begging me, oh, don't know, we are sorry, we are sorry. The next time I want to go, I, I don't need to apply to grant me the, the visa. I, I was so angry. I was livid. I missed my flight because I applied a month and they were 
wasting my time. So you're telling me that, that because I was from Nigeria, you should take them extra time to look at, into my case. Baba, they didn't tell me before I filed in my British application to get my British passport. So, and that was the end of it. So, so not because you are happy they're holding a British passport. You can't see the world. I can't see the world with that lens. And it's for me, it's troubling. You can't see the world with that lens. And that for me is hard. And so people in diaspora, when they shout and, and cry about the state of Nigeria, because they are feeling the cost. They can see, they, can, they are bearing the cost. They see them in a job interviews with accent. They look down on them. They are bearing the cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are bearing the cost. So if we are more concerned, then we have a valid reason. There's a valid reason because if you're in Nigeria and you choose not to leave that con contraption, you, you know, you, you won't bear external costs. You only bear internal costs. But if you bear both internal, both external, yes, Baba, you go shout now. Baba, good night, Jerry. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, hey. Um, every time I speak to people who have, uh, who have uh, left their uh, country of residence to... Uh, on holidays, and they want to talk about how they got discriminated against uh, in those countries because of their green passport. I kind of always, my PTSD of why I don't want to travel or go anywhere, sort of always kick in and say, I don't want to do all this while and get to one airport. And they will say, uh, if, you have a, if you have a British passport, you this way, American passport this way. And you will see all of them with their British American, but nobody they check them. You could see them, they walk out, they don't even they queue. And you, you are there with all others, oh, Pakistani, the Kenyans, and everybody you go there like this. Your family will have to go and wait for you. So we bear the cost of bad governance, whether you are in Nigeria or not in Nigeria. Now that is deep, Adiola. You're going to make me have some deep thinking tonight. Here, yeah. hello there. Uh, hello, Mr. Maigo. Uh, yeah, hello, it's sir. me, Dan. Sir? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's me, old up. Old yeah, up. Uh, I hope you still remember me. I'm trying to repeat the game. I'm trying to now. <laughs> old, yeah, old up is my uh, social media yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. name. What do you call your, your out there? Okay. What do you want me to call? Yes. So I can probably just hold on to it now and I won't forget. Do you want me to keep on to the yeah. old up, right? Yeah, old dab, old dab. Oh, yeah, old, oh, oh, L D A B, O L D A B, O L D A B, yeah, right, got it. Now. Yeah, it's abbreviation. Yeah, it's abbreviation of my names. I just put it, you know, take all my names and then right. abbreviate. I'm trying to make sure yeah. it's not going to be a tough one for me, but old dab, old dab should be easy. Yeah. Be, Baba. How are you, Baba? <laughs> Yeah, I'm fine. You see, recently I was uh, I went home. I went to Nigeria, and uh, uh, I realized that people have, I mean, they uh, they've adjusted. Yeah, uh, people they don't know anything better. They don't know because when you've never seen a good, uh, better, better situation before in your life so you experience anything you can, uh, that you can yeah. see is a good system so that you can now come yes. here so yeah so when people are mentally enslaved that way there's no way you can help them so um people believe that uh uh you know uh the governments that if they abuse you or if they catch you well that's your that's your cup of tea that's it so they, like, there's like, no human like, rights. No, just don't get caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's, uh, you know, where there's no respect for human life, no uh, basic, you know, for, for the mental human rights, there's no way that kind of a country can ever, you know, prosper really because uh, even the judiciary they they smear it on everybody's face because they know that even the people that needed that help they don't see themselves like people who need the help it's only when the election or whatever is going on they you know they just realize a little bit that oh yeah so we are actually suffering oh there's a lot of things that is not right oh so they now you know try try to make not about it mm -hmm kick against it but don't be surprised i have you know i wasn't surprised when i got this you know eight ten months down the line 
people have 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 moved on, and uh, if they, if a police catch you and last was it last year or last year? This this last this month actually I came back this uh this month. Yes. Now, so now you you said they have adjusted. So when you say they have adjusted, <laughs> is it that you? That's why all we are seeing, all this we are like yes. you know proving and all of that. Like you probably yes. should hear them, maybe uh, complain to or uh, and then tell you how much they feel bad that this is happening. So conversation like that can tell you if they have moved on or not. So tell me. What was the conversation like? Like they already telling you last like, if to say, oh, they have they have moved on or they have adjusted. Ah, they, you know, yeah, they will say, ah, uh, Baba, uh, they will say the, the slogan is ah, Baba Tinumbu don't the drive us now. So nothing we feel do. We go just, you know, we don't take up. Hmm. Okay, so you know, they the, you know, they've they've taken, you know, they've they've moved on. So um basically, basically I think. Uh, I don't know how to put it, but um, you see, we people are not ready to. They don't know. They don't know what to, what to do because they are so poor that they only think of the next food. You know, the the immediate I gratification. Mean, I told that today. Like, the, I think, yeah, the, I told him. Yeah, I said, the immediate. Is it because mm, people are too busy with what they will eat that? Mm. That one has become priority, and other things are just secondary. That could that be the reason oh, yeah. why people, you know, and he didn't really see it that way. It was pretty much just like, no, my ego is more than that. These guys are like, like they, they, they are not interested in some of those things that we are saying. And another point, it was like uh, maybe uh, because it's tough that uh, some of them don't even have money to, uh, you know, sort of subscribe their data. To data to really watch all of this. I said, Baba, leave yeah. on it. She people are not feeling yeah. what they are feeling in that place that they themselves are talking. Said, no, no, they are feeling it, but they are not no, because, the way we are talking about it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you know that in Nigeria, Nigeria is the highest, um, uh, uh, you know, where you will find individual self-employed individual in the whole world. Okay. Self-employed because everybody people, is self-employed. Yeah, the people. Okay, yeah, self-employed. They are all self-employed. Yeah. So, yeah, self-employed. So everybody is just lying to everybody to just to get daily bread, and then you know, no tax on it. Yeah, everybody is just getting what they can get. Take this, take that. Buy gari, buy small. The rica of um, of rice then is sorted. That day is sorted. So the next day, so the struggle continue next day. So as long as they can, you know, their food is secure for the next time. They believe that the world is ending. Is if they cannot see that gari for this evening. Yeah, 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 yeah. something like that. But, but even even if they can't see that gari for this ending, they still believe that God will. We will uh, provide that guy. So they would rather go and pray, or you know, go to mosque or go to church. In fact, that, that's, that's, that's the, the only way that. Miracle. Yeah, I see. Monday morning, Monday morning, you will hear people sh praying loud in churches. Oh God! So then you be asking, ah, there's no work for these people. Yeah, because they are self-employed. You know, they will. That's when you will say, ah, uh, where's Mukaila? Uh, I thought I called him to come and do something for me. He's not around. Then Mukala we so resurface two him days him later. After yes, show him the way. yes, yes. After he has consumed the food he has at home, uh, at home. so he will now resurface. Ah, okay, oh God, I don't come. Uh, the job where you won't give me is then you do. So it's you know you survive every day that way, and then uh, yeah, that's it. So That's Nigeria for us. At all. You didn't see any kind of thing that you can say, oh, this hardship or oh, this suffering. Oh, uh, I can see uh, a lot of motivation in these people that if, they want to hand it. They are only waiting for turn it to go. There's nothing like that that you can yeah. see in their eyes, no? They are joking about it. They're just joking. Oh, they've they've turned it to go. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, 
Oh my God! This you know Nigerian leader they've mastered the, that they master the art of how to control people with poverty so much. So I know I, I, I'm in fact I don't blame uh, Tinubu because it is only a country where there's there's uh, production. There's you know when people work constantly and then people will expect that okay life will change. People will educate their children accordingly they will know what is human rights they will know what is self uh, self respect or you know dignity and self esteem so but nigeria doesn't have that a normal person doesn't believe that is entitled to go to hospital when he's sick they will rather treat themselves at home drink agbo do this do that you know so we have a long way to go my brother i swear to god we, are, we will keep to that part because you know what it break my heart this this uh, afternoon or this evening to say when that man who has been a uh, a follower of Mayogu for nearly eleven years and he was so disappointed that the people back there eh they had they they, they have no interest in all of this now we they overstretch ourselves. I was like, she want what a mobile insincha. She really got a word. It my God, it is in Nigeria. A rich man thinks that is a he, 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 he can do, you know, he can beat the hell out of you. Yes, it is a rich man that will break your head because he's rich, because um, look, their mentality yeah, there. Poor, yeah, poor people they like need that. real education. And now you see poor people go they can they uh, sort of uh, blame you for provoking a rich man? When he is angry, yes, eh? you have made him angry now. You better just go and beg him. If not, you are going to rot in jail. Oh. They will lock you up in prison forever. Oh. Like, are you serious? Uh, yes. Eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is different. They've locked you. Take another one, Baba. God, yeah. Thank you. All right, then. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, I was talking to my friend today, right? This time around, my friend in the in, you know in the Glasgow here. Yeah uh by sure so uh and then uh, we were talking about uh nigerians and uh how they sort of uh, get used to their oppressors and all that i'll tell you the story but let me take this call before the person changes his mind hello there my king Baba. my king the good prince. evening my king eh uh, prince Adi. Uh, prince Adi Bayo. don't tell me now okay prince Adi Bayo here yeah from uh, sweden because there's only one prince in sweden I've got two or three princes yeah. in Canada, and I've got another prince, here, yeah. uh, you know, Prince Austin and all that in the UK. But this is Prince Adebayo. You're yeah. right. You're right. Bless My you. king, Baba, some, how are something, you? They have, some, something they happened for Nigeria. I did. Yes. Something they happened for Nigeria. You know, I called Nigeria today. Did you? You know, it's been long. You know, like the last caller said, you know, some of the callers today, they've been speaking my mind, you know. The last call like I just left now I said those people in Nigeria somehow they are they are they are acclimatizing to the poverty that the the poor leadership is giving to them. You know, poverty plus poverty, poor mind plus poor people. You know, equals equals zero. Well, the Nigerians, I don't know how we, I don't know how we think we are, we are smart people. It's like it's like the smart ones are the ones that left the country. Baba, I'm telling you the truth too. It's not by coincidence that you, me, and the rest of us left that country. It's not coincidence. It is, it, yeah, it's something they call a uh, survival of the fittest, you know? Mm. The, fittest, the fittest ones are living. The ones who are smarter are living. The ones who are there. We have to preserve the, we have to preserve the intelligence one, therefore by taking them yeah. to the place that is going to run. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Because the same, if you look at there's a reason why America and Jamaica are doing well in track and field. When these uh, uh, people came to, to take slaves, they were taking the fittest people who are strong enough to walk. Mm. There's no coincidence that they are doing well in track and field. Are they, how many people are in Jamaica? Are they more than Nigerians or the whole of Africa? Why are they always taking first, second, first, second, the same thing, US? You know, there's a reason why 
they, I was calling people in Nigeria to to tell them what they to have do. A name. They have a, they, have, they have a name for that thing you just said. Now I think they call it a law of natural yeah. selection or something. Where Thank the you. Best brains, law of natural the best selection. Yes. Said, are selected out yes. of the weakest out, in order to preserve exactly. the species. And they said exactly. that animals, oh, animals are better than us because animals will never yes. allow the weakest to lead them. The weakest of animals will never no. lead an animal. You know? But go on. Exactly. They open something here now. Yes. Are they with you? Yes. So there's, that's why when we are fighting for them from here, if you go back to the country, you see them, they are very... You know, back. they are very laid back, yeah. you know, relax, exactly, you know, and they don't think that they are in the soup. They should be desperate to get out of the hole, but they are relaxed. That means if if they want to kidnap five people now, they will take any five people they like. Right. They want to, if, if uh, soldiers want to enter Okwama now, they will still see people to kill. Yeah. And they, that's where people, you know, when soldiers, when they kill soldiers there, Everybody should run away, but you well, believe you me. Because you expect them to come back and today. kill all of them. Exactly. Even if those soldiers enter there, they will see one of them remaining there. Like no, now soldiers can't do that. They know that we didn't do it. Exactly. Everybody automatically exactly. believes that they will kill us before they ask questions. So let's run, though. Exactly. Exactly. You know the people in the in the in, the, in, the, in that place, they have they have they have they have they, have, they, they acclimatize quickly to. This kind of situation. Look at the and, and even the leadership that's so blind. Look at what people that are leaders are saying. Look at what the wife of Tinubu was saying the other day. That you are going, why are you going abroad to do and kill or kill on share people you say? And now uh, epis. I respect that man so much. I don't know how maybe I can I, I need to watch that. Video. When Adiola said there is a to, video, yes. I'm like, how come I haven't seen it? I've been looking for two days. That's why I didn't mention it on yeah. this platform for the past two days. But now they say there is a video. But I'm going to look for it. Yeah. I'm, I won't be disappointed, you know? You know? The, the, the kind of things I hear in that place, it's like everything is getting worse. Even how did we manage to get this kind of president that cannot even, yeah. cannot speak, it's like slurring. Yeah. How can we be like this? What is happening? It's like, the, the, ah, Baba, I know if you talk again, you know. <laughs> I know people to do. You know that Ooh. that level that uh, they will say, ah, Chori, Tia Golagabati, she, hmm. Oh, God. It simply means that the situation is has gone beyond just talking. It has gone beyond more talk. serious that a real Balaga could buy. Or it will not do real Balaga could buy, you see. Ah. Or it is serious. Baba, I think, I think. Somebody I was talking to, I say I've raised money for this person three times. Set up different businesses. Oh, fail. Prince. Oh, fail. And you, ah, no, 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 no. The thing, the thing that, the, oh, it is well, it is well, you know. Huh? It is well. We leave it, it on that, well. Prince. Eh? You should enjoy the rest Baba. of uh, the evening. And the weekend is almost here, I too, see. right? Yes, so you yes, so. All right. Thank you so much uh, for all the time. Thank you. Man. Thank you very much. You have a good Thank day. you. Bless you. So I have Austin. I want to believe this is Austin. My own uh, uh, Austin. Is that you? Are you there? Can you hear me? Ah, uh, sorry. I actually thought I got uh, Austin on, but somehow I think uh, that just uh, dropped. I'll get another person here. Um, hello there. My good general political. Yes. yes, sir. How are you today, Baba? We thank God. We thank God. But I'm calling with I'm saying we thank God in another what's it called um dimension or in another um like, like uh, the opposite uh, viewpoint. Let's just say exactly you know, like uh, we thank God, even though we exactly. We are not really thanking God. But yeah, we still thank God. I get you, Baba. Here we are. Go on. You know, one of the callers, one of the callers said that people in Nigeria are already acclimatizing to the situation that is happening. I'm not surprised. Do you know why? Why, sir? I'm not surprised because that's the way the religious indoctrination has shaped our thinking. 
An average Nigerian has been has been even from cultural what's it called bringing has been has been uh, brought up to believe in faith. Faith spelled F A T E, not F A I T. F A T E. That is whatever happens to you. Whatever happens to you is destined by God or it's a situation that you have to face. You have to accept it. You have to assimilate with it and move it with with life, either good or bad. Now, culturally, if we've been raised up with that mentality, how are we going to have revolutionary people? And that is why we were raised in every family. Mm -hmm. Even if you are abused, you believe, well, it is just a time. At some point, I will leave and leave the family. But at that point, you will not say, no, I'm not taking this. That's a mentality. We live with it. We grow up and we believe, well, Instead of fighting for our rights, we'll be like, let me let me manage the situation and get away with it. That is why some of us were able to japa. That is why some people that were not able to japa, some were able to marry up their economic value, sorry, their economic status, and still managing the whole situation. You know, I was shocked. Uh, Are they with you, Baba? Oh, somebody must have interrupted our call. And it must be either network or somebody just called my caller. Is that something about WhatsApp, right? When you are making a WhatsApp call, right? And then another proper call just uh, come through. It can just suddenly put you on hold. Oh, bro. Are you there? I'm so sorry, right? I'm going to have to go take another call, okay? Can you still hear me? I'm so sorry, guys. So I'm going to have to take another one so that we can give other people chance, okay? Sorry about that. I'm here. Hello there. Can you hear me? good general. Yes, sir. Yeah. My good general. How are you? May God bless, may God bless you. Good evening. And you too, sir. Good evening. I just called because the last time I called you was uh, during the Buari era. But I watch your program every day. I'm addicted to this program. But my contribution is just that, like the callers, some of them have said, the problem of Nigeria are the Nigerians, not the leaders. No, no, don't no, bother to leaders, save them. No. Oh, God bless you. You know, have you bothered to check those who are really fighting for Nigeria? Like the life of the Shure, the life of the Peter Obi. Have you bothered sometimes? Let me read their comments on Instagram or when they carry Peter Obi news or Shure news. And you see how people... Supposed Nigerians. Yeah, then yeah, you know that these people are enjoying this. They are enjoying this country. It's me and you that is worried. They are you enjoying it. They no, love. They, you said no. Say sometimes they talk about us. I be like all of now with their brothers. Yes, man. You always Even when I read you know everything. You always believe that yeah. tell you have all the ideas. No wahala then. It, oh yeah, now continue. Even when I yeah. Even when I read comment on your platform. Hmm. I see people look talking as a God. Who calls this country? Don't know. Or is there a sacrifice they do on Nigeria youth that make them lost it? I don't know. I think because I don't know at my mother age today, I live in abroad. I pay my mother for for a generator. I pay for a hospital B. I pay for everything my mother eats. Why is more than they call me? I know what to do. Then the government cannot provide anything for my own mother with his age, with her age. Then how you that is your youth of 20 years, 
you are fighting my ego yeah. or comment session. Yeah. Fighting Peter Obi, yeah. comment session. Somebody will never talk. Fighting Ego say, he go say he go, uh, I mean, Peter Obi will never be president of this country by the grace of yeah. God. We dodge a bullet at, uh, at your age. Okay. As I say, if Peter B is not president, mm. your leaders that you are supporting, they are praying to be like Peter B. He should already you are abusing. Your leaders take their children from Nigeria to go and put in this country. Yeah. Where should already children are running around as an area boy and area girl. Hmm. That's where your leader use your own money to go and sponsor their children there. He should already you are abusing. The children don't even know you. The future of that guy is where it's funny. He's just always fighting for you yeah. to have good life. You are you become a great keyboard warrior. Hey. Right thing. Loving uh, no. oppressors. Like person with a sweat. So oh. much. Eh? And they talk, you think that person sit talk saying life never spoil. Are they eh. sure say their level lives never spoil this way? Eh? Defending your My ego is advising you. you eh? I'll tell you something though. Yeah. Now the same show we tell all of us say, see you. If you want to fight for Nigerians, okay, you have to remember that you can only use one hand. Number one, don't okay. fight for them. But if you choose to, it's okay. But you have to use one hand. That one hand you are using okay. to fight the the oppressors. Fight them, fight them. You have to use this other hand, not to do fighting, you know, but to protect yourself from Nigerians. We're going to okay. stone you. We won't beat you. So we okay. send you. Did we send you to go and criticize government? Did we send you to go and okay. fight government? You this show, right? He this show, right? This show mm -hmm. is a troublemaker. This, uh, okay. we will send you. So I now okay. said, well, why would anybody want to put themselves in that situation? I don't want to fight for Nigeria. My ego, my ego come out every day just to enlighten your dull brain. You could erect. This my ego say you too much. Yeah. You are your prayer point, your leader. Yeah. Your prayer point of the prayer point of your leader is to steal your money. Yeah. So go and put their children in the school. My ego children are going yeah. with our friends. My you children are for keep children on for the same place, yeah. And then uh, my, my, myself and, and them will go meet for the same doctor, GP. The same doctor that they come here, come they get special treatment with. It's the same doctor who work and enter because of the pay tax. Now there and you go see keyboard warrior. Me. You will be saying you know hey. today, you won't go go to where I call the tell you say you deserve better on a me be the enemy. <laughs> Explain to me, say Mama, I, do. I don't tire. These people don't need to fight for a beg. May they enjoy the oppressor. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. God bless you. Good, good, good night, Thank you so eh? Much, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Nice one. See, oh, eh, everybody knows, say, number one, uh, I may not kind of say all of us with the diaspora, we are overreacting or we are the ones showing too much concern. I'm not going to say that. It might look like that. There are those within that Nigeria that gives uh, thanks. And they remain very, very grateful for platforms like this that help them to find answers to their thoughts. Because there are people in Nigeria that uh, ordinarily, their fellow Nigerians are looking at them, say there's something is wrong with them, for trying to reject the same system that they are supporting and praising. And somehow, somehow, these guys are just they're like, uh, are we doing something wrong? Are we, are we actually doing something right? Could standing up mean something right? Platforms like Mayegu's Diary Politico reassure them that it is actually the right thing to stand up against any evil that you know is practically there to work against you. So that is why platforms like this, they do help. It seems like they are not, they are not going far enough. They're not going far enough. I've told you, you need to go and look for somebody who can sign a, a sort of a 100,000 uh, pound sterling uh, deal with Mayegu here. I'm not saying they should give me 100,000. I'm talking about where I can actually recruit the real resources, you know, the real people within that space, Abi, that all of us with the couple say, bless them, know they hear this message. Now, now we can come back later. So, but bless them, this message is too loud for everybody now. Because listen, eh, it is like we are not winning. Eh? And it's sad. See, those of us in the diaspora, what we are seeing, and we continue to see and continue to raise alarm 
especially for those who pretend that they are not seeing them, okay? It's so crucial that we are using one stone to kill two birds. I'll tell you more later. Austin is on the line. I don't know if he's still there. Austin, are you there? I'm still here. I'm still here, Mayugu, Mayugu, I'm here. I kind of lost you. I was like, oh, Austin is here, but you are so gone. How are you tonight? No, no, no. I'm okay, Mayugu. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thanks for asking. Please. Well, um, I don't even know how, how to thank you enough because you are doing a wonderful work. Despite all your efforts how to sensitize uh, the people and uh, it seems uh, we are just pouring water on the stone. But uh, and it breaks out I really have... where people will go there, come back and tell us that. Uh, I am starting from the comments here. Yeah, yeah, um, the, the the man from the temple of truth that went to Nigeria. I am not surprised because I have it even in my own family. Hmm. Even in my even in my own family. All of us believe in separation. Only my sister doesn't believe in separation. <laughs> All of us. I, she's even in, before she's my in Nigeria or she's here. <laughs> <laughs> even before my mother died, she believes in, in separation. Yeah, she's still in Nigeria. Right. And she's right. only she's depending she's only, and she's and she's only depending on me. Hmm. That doesn't believe uh, that doesn't believe in one Nigeria. So that is to tell you the irony of it. So, but uh, what, I, what I want to say, I have never been surprised because you don't know the damage in Nigeria. The number the damage in Nigeria is very big, extremely big. It's even bigger than what we can think or believe on. The damage in Nigeria is so much huge. So that is one thing about Nigerians. Nigerians are not people that are um, consistent. What you are believing outside, you don't believe it, you don't know it. They propagate everything because they are criminally minded. That is the reason why they are um, thinking outside of uh, leave it like that, leave it like that, because everybody is believing that one so day no they it will get to so their own That we are yeah, not yeah. down. I see. Exactly. exactly. It's only in Nigeria you will see that somebody will tell you, how, how I wish now I would be going on the street and I pick 20 million naira. Who will throw 20 million naira on the street? Who will do that? Which pocket? How did he carry the money? It's only in Nigeria you hear that kind of story. That is why a pastor will come and say, money is going to enter into your bank account. Now, um, heavenly money. Everybody will start praying. Miracle, yeah, no, miracle, miracle, miracle money. Miracle money. Miracle, miracle money. That is only in Nigeria. I know. Miracle. Yeah, that's only in Nigeria. So Nigeria, their brains are so damaged mm -hmm. that you can't repair it. There is no way you can repair it. So if you are talking about Alan Onyema, Alan Onyema has been a criminal. Forget all these things. He's a criminal. Mm. Forget all these things. He is only speaking for his people that say he's an agent. They sent him to come and say, uh, tell, and, and brainwash the people that he can brainwash. Mm. Telling you, uh, why are you going to abroad? Why are you going to abroad? If you are earning 200,000, you are better. the same guy who said that the, the Igbos don't need the Afra. No, nobody should talk about it exactly. because exactly. Igbos are trying to... Yeah, he is a good example of the Igbos who believe he's in Nigeria. A, he's a criminal. Best in Nigeria. Ah, man. So ask, him how, ask, him, ask, him, ask him how he made his money. Hmm. Ask him how he got his money. How come that every Christmas, Alex Onyemma, Igbos should be paying 250000 to to fly from Lagos to East, whilst he, he, the same flight he's hmm. using, to fly from Lagos to Kano will be paying 140,000. Wow. Ask me why. He's a criminal. So it's only people that are su uh, supporting him blindly. Yeah. Because Nigerians are people that you can never trust. You can never trust Nigeria. You can never trust Nigeria. I'm telling you, most of these guys you are seeing, they are agents. Mm -hmm. Even that man that are telling you that he's selling building materials in, uh, in Benin, you might be surprised. That is one of all these uh, governors, uh, um, agents, govern politicians that were running errands for politicians. Hmm. I'm telling you honestly, you, you will never know. See, this will, guy <laughs> was so he was like yeah. he's a Benin man, okay, and he believes that uh, yeah. if he's given a choice, okay, to choose uh, where he would yeah. have to be, he said he would yeah. choose Biafra. All right, he's probably somebody who is yeah. so much yeah. like uh, vast in it. And he said he's doing so because yeah. of uh, his own historical, uh, what do you call it, historical yeah. uh, uh, link to that this whole thing, right? Yeah. So he saw an Igbo man, he yeah. walked in. He was ready to spend all his last card there, get uh, everything he wanted for his uh, uh, construction and all that there. The conversation went on. How can an, an original Igbo man 
eh, not know that somebody would throw the bait of uh, are you in support of Biafra or not? You should not go all out and begin the young nonsense until you know better. Who is this guy? The guy who just spent 38 million yeah. on the shop. Eh? Okay, yeah. let me know yeah. if he's a pro Nigeria, so I go know how, good, how to answer. Yeah. Let me know if it's a pro Biafra. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how to answer. What kind of yeah. an Igbo man with yeah. Biafra under the bus and think he's making sense? My ego, my ego. You are not supposed to. You are not supposed to be surprised. You know why? You know why? Let me tell you. There is even one roofraff that was that used to come to Abuja. I think they are they arrested him now. He used to write Ijele. his own placard. Come with. He did, he did, yeah, yeah, Ijele. Come with with his own guys. He's also by who posted them and other other guys. There are many agents like that. You will never know. They will have their shops. You think they are only they are only businessmen. These are government agents. I'm telling you, there was something you were saying uh, two days or three days ago, um, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. That even if referendum come now, you will see the person you know quite all right. Yes. We collect money from the Nigerian government and vote on, uh, against Biafra. Absolutely. You will see. I, I'm very confident. <laughs> you will see. Yes. So, so yeah, you, all these people, you cannot bring it, you cannot remove it. But mm. what I'm saying is that we are in majority, we are bigger than yes, them. We really. are asking for the question, we are bigger than them. They are minority, they are tiny, they are tiny. Even even them that are so, um, taken, look at, look at um, some time ago in Bono State, the man that was shouting, I'm not a Biafra, I'm a one Nigerian. The Boko Haram, Boko Haram killed him. When he mentioned him, I should not watch him. It's one story, yeah, uh, you yeah. know one thing, Baba? That guy's story, yeah. because I shared his story. I remember when yeah. that video yeah. first yeah. came out. It was uh, way back yeah. in uh, 2020. It was way, way back. All right? yeah. It was after the yeah. 2019 yeah. elections. Okay, Then the video popped. Yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, this guy he was speaking also. It was a long video before he later showed. Yeah. See, yeah. That story that the yeah. guy was later killed, yeah. his uh, filling station was burned yeah. down by Boko Haram. In February, yeah. Not that angry. yeah. It's one story I yeah, yeah. always keep telling myself never to be true. Will you believe yeah. that? It's a story I heard, right? And I kept telling yeah. myself that yeah. I pray it remains yeah. fake news. It must be a fake news. Till today, you won't believe this, oh. Yeah. Till today, I'm still waiting for, because you mentioned it, I'm still waiting for that man to just surface and say, no, I didn't die. It's my ego, you don't know. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't know that yet. You don't know Nigeria. If you share a video now, Nigeria will say, ah, it's an old video. It's an old video. It's fake. It's an old video. But it's the reality that is going on. And Nigeria is a place where... When they killed him, eh, I was praying that made the news look yeah. true. Made the fake news. This yeah. is the fourth year. I am still waiting for it to be yeah. fake news. He's ne dead. Never. He will, he, will, he, will, he will never come out. He's dead. So now, now, now the Kano said, go and serve Nigeria and come back in shape. It is happening. If anybody is fighting for Nigeria, I even said in my own mind last time, there was a, there was a day we are discussing with some of group of guys. I said, if I'm Namdekan, if I come out, I abandon all the rest. Because the people you are fighting for, they are not worth it. I'm telling you honestly. They don't worth it. You are just wasting time. You are, they, you are just wasting time. All this program there, this year, a program that is well educated and educative. Somebody will listen to it and say, don't mind him. He's sitting comfortable there in Glasgow and talking nonsense. Hmm. And as if Mayegu is your problem. As if um, if you abuse Mayegu, the cup of rice or cup of curry will change in the market. They've lost so, the number and they don't, for almost three years right now. It has not years, reduced yeah, the, yeah. the hardship in Nigeria no. has escalated. No, <laughs> no. no. They, don't, they don't care. What, what they are telling you is let him stay there. He was the one that came from all the whole from from UK come to come and cause problem for us. Yeah. No problem. Somebody that is living all of us. Really? Yeah, for all of us. Yeah. Somebody that is living comfortable. We are so much myopic in brain and we are so much poor in mentality. That is why we are not moving forward. My so I will stop here. Austin. Thank, thank you, sorry. Thank, thank you for your good work. God bless you for all that you have been doing. I really appreciate so much. God bless you, Austin. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, take thank it you easy as well. Yeah. Right? Nice one, that's, uh, that's yeah, Austin there. And I think uh, uh, our lady, Lady uh, Charm, is not letting this pass without adding our name as well. How are you doing tonight or this afternoon, Mother? Yes, it's, yes. Let, let me just call it. It's evening. It's evening. Every time I'm in the evening, I expect you all to be in the afternoon. When, I, when we are in the afternoon, automatically I wanted you all to be in the morning. But it doesn't work that way, does it? <laughs> eh? 
it's no, it doesn't. It doesn't. And yeah, you are already in the uh, and we are almost near midnight too. How are you? Yes, doing? yeah, you're almost you're almost into another day, isn't it? Into like uh, another day. You're right. Uh, you I'm fine. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot, lot yeah, better. Yeah, I wanted to say that your 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 voice seems more clearer than it was yesterday or day before. It's, it's no, I think it's been, it's been, yes, it's, 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 it still sounds weird, but um, it's getting, I feel a lot better than I did, like, do you know, those previous times I called, I, I think one of the last times I called, I started talking to you, I was like, wiped out, <laughs> so, I had Sorry. to go and have a proper lie down, I know. yeah, so, but I've been following the show, um, I hate to talk. I've been following the talks that you've been giving this past few couple of days. So I want to, so that other people can call in. Sure. Now I want to start with the abducted children and the the, I see the 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 governor of Borno State. Just to add in my own two cents with regards to that whole situation. Some somewhere inside of me, I don't know why. I don't believe that those children are abducted. I don't know why, but um. That's how that's the that's the way I feel. But even if they were, I could be totally wrong, but even if they were abducted, I feel that some other things have gone on in the background, which they are unwilling to give us that information. And again, for children who have been abducted, abducted, those children seemed in very good spirits. I don't know. The girl who was who they had um elected to speak the one who said she wanted to become a doctor you know she was smiling she was happy and, and i'm thinking to myself if you were away from your parents for 16 days with murderous terrorists i'm not quite sure why your 32 is out there <laughs> you know why you are smiling and why you are happy or is it because you have a microphone in front of you and uh, you know, the limelight is on you and then you are smiling the way you're smiling. I feel like if you've seen people, if you know people who have been traumatized, even if it's, even if the trauma went on for, for one hour, right? There's a shift even in their psyche, their psychology, in their psychology, even the way they behave, right? It's not... You have to sh like show that you can be, uh, I mean, you, you, know, don't, you don't shake that off easily. Like, spend no, you don't shake that off easily, days, you know. Or 15 days. When you spend about 14... 15 days with terrorists inside in a place where you know no one could locate you and things like that and you spend that amount of time with without your parents without family and you only had your your mates to come or who are your company and then you had a teacher who who they claim was killed and things like that and you still have the disposition to smile and think you know and, and you know laugh and stuff like that so because I don't know. A lot of us might know people who have been traumatized, even even children, right? Who have been traumatized. Say even your child, maybe they fell and then they got up. You can see there's a shift in their the way they behave. You know, there's a fear in letting that kind of thing happen, and then and then not to talk of when you've been abducted by terrorists and things like that. So and then the fact that you know, obviously the Borno State Governor didn't want to give out information oh, about whether or not. Oh, Cardin okay, Cardina, sorry. Yeah. The Cardinal State Governor didn't want to give out information regarding the oh, whether not or not. Was... It's not just that he didn't want to give us, it's not just that it's not giving info. He becomes agitated for you asking questions. That's even what makes yeah. it more suspicious. And, okay, you get. Yes, um, but and again, that speaks agitated. to the good. But that speaks to, the, to what you've been, always been saying regarding these governors not even understanding their role mm -hmm. because there's the Freedom of Information Act. We are entitled to ask those questions mm -hmm. and you have to give us those answers. We're not, you know, we're not asking you because we want to make life difficult for you. You are required to share that information because it informs us as to whatever it is, um, either the lack of the absence of governance and where corruption is, you know, it informs so many things right so you can't say oh um you know let's just be happy the children are here no yes we are grateful that the children are here but we still need to know exactly what went down you know and like you remember a lot of people that, have week pointed week guy, that when the access guy died in there uh, on his way to uh, las vegas in um, Chopper. yes and then the yeah. day after i think it was like 24 hours after or less than 24 hours after uh, the fire department of uh, that area came out to give their preliminary report, which is them, the first set of info of what happened. Yes. Before they will now give detailed report. In Nigeria, 
children were kidnapped. There is nobody that can say they have report of uh, how and uh, how those uh, children were kidnapped in the past. What went wrong? Okay. What, what, what should be done? Nothing. Don't ask how any can questions. We, how, the money is taken already. Let's just be grateful what, and move on. How? It, and, and this is the these are the things. But you ask all these questions because you live in a same society. Yeah. You, need to see, you live in a society that wants to use all of that information to make sure that it doesn't happen again. again. Like you said, mm -hmm. the question is how were those children? One hundred and they said now they said one hundred and thirty-seven of them. Previously they said it was two hundred and thirty-seven. We don't really even know that. exactly. So that was what they said initially. We don't even know how many kids actually were taken out of that state. No. Now. If you notice, if you notice when they were you know, taking those children to all of those places where they were having those, you know, reporters and stuff like that, they were bossing them. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't as if, you know, they, they couldn't have walked 137 children away. So that means there was there's some kind of infrastructure around even this kidnapping of those kind number of, of people. So are we saying that we cannot actually um how to how to identify those kind of infrastructures? cars moving, buses moving, because you had to have taken all those children somehow, yeah, ferried the them from where they were. Needed to move the logistics, exactly, the logistics to move 137 children, because you wouldn't have been walking them from no. one place or the other. Like, remember one of the times when we spoke about it, you said, even if it was okay, you saw one person that was tired and the person was on the road, and you said maybe two people that were tired on the road, you left them there. You know, okay, they are walking or something like that. Well, now you're not seeing anybody. So the, the, that means there's some logistics around the movement and the ferrying of all of those people from one place to the other. And you can't tell me that you are not able to identify that that movement and neutralize it. Because again, we are living in a country that doesn't want to do anything about it because they found that situation beneficial. And like you've always said that the people who are doing these things are well known to the government and they are letting it happen. They are playing politics with the life of children. And that's not okay. And then fail to convince me otherwise. These children are caught in this their political power play. And if a real investigation is conducted from that sunny guy and the military that the soldiers that said they found the girls or they found the kids, right? They will be uh -huh. in jail, life in jail. Absolutely. Right now, I, I, a, real I, I, investigation, I, I, a real investigation is conducted, though. But it's never gonna happen. It's never going to happen. Now, like one thing, another thing, because yesterday's program, we know we're able to call in. Yeah, now, Benway State, those, uh, yeah, there was no phone call. So you had the, I don't know if it's a Chinese lifting, um, what's it called? We don't yeah, know what, we don't know what we have to. no clue from a clue. We, we have no clue, Benway. exactly. And they say it's a regular have, thing. Hmm. So it's a regular thing. So this is something that's been ongoing for a while. My ego. Huh? I don't know what is going on. I don't know. I don't know if it is the society that we have today have produced. I'm sorry to say, and, I'm, and they don't really mean to offend anybody, whether we have produced weak individuals. And the reason why I say this is because how can people, foreigners, come into your own land, till your own land, pack use, your own resources, uh -huh. pack it neatly, and leave? No, use I your own seaports. To now move them, you, and there is no okay. catch. There is nobody standing uh, and saying, "There is nobody." Oh, we we, we we've stopped this. Really? The the people, the Benue people, chief people, Lidoma, Igala, all of those people. I, I don't know. I think Igala is Igala. You know, Igala yeah, is Benue there, speaking. Yeah, Berom, Jukum, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, Berom, uh, exactly. Berom, all of these people. When I was in when I was in school in Plato State, right? They talked about them as fierce people you know, warrior-like people even, do you understand? You don't mess with them. So I don't understand what is happening now that you people cannot stop this foreigners and say, what are you taking? You know, have some kind of like, okay, agitate, this is our this, this is our land, this is our resources, this is our place. Whether or not you have the authority of the governor, we don't have the authority of the people. The people are acting like they are, they are how would I put it? They're very passive. I don't know if you sense that, you know? Well, then you can, is, all you can is, do is do. Right. You are right. Like people are more passive and uh, mostly, like you said also, right? Uh, maybe we have more weak people or weak men now than then, okay? Because back then they would probably have raised some questions and if they don't get an answer, they would have raised some dust. That could have helped exactly. other people to react and we would have known what caused the problem, you know, why the fight, and they would say, oh yeah, it's because of so-and-so. 
But it's, this it's because of so right, so okay, they rather be blessed you know, or be, be, be bribed and look away. No, 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 as, as, as from being bribed, okay, so you you put it on your phone and then you say, Oh, please speak to the government. Speak to which government? The people that are doing these things, part of your yeah. government, what you need to be doing is retaliating because at the end of the day, just like you mentioned yesterday, none of these none of these resources are coming back to you people in any way, in any form, not in form of infrastructure, not in form of education, not in form of hospitals, not in form of good schools or not. Nothing is coming to you people. They're taking away resources from you. They're leaving you naked. Yes. You know, yes. they're leaving you without nothing and you're not doing any. It's like we, we, we whip out our phones and we ask help from the government, this same government that is robbing you blind and making you naked, making you impoverished. They're not going to do anything. You have to... What I don't understand is that people, don't you know you have to fight for yourself? This is your land. It is not the Chinese people's land. Even if they become aggressive, you tell, you remind you remind them that they are foreigners. If you know where China is and where Benue is, see the distance from Benue to China. These people are coming, leaving all of that, crossing the whole sea to come to your land. And they are just whipping out the phone to do what? Okay, that's that one. Then, with regards to what needs to be done, because we already have the three pillars of you know of people dealing with us in Nigeria, the government, the executive, and the judiciary, right? I think that the only way to mitigate against people is if the diaspora. In my own opinion, I could be entirely wrong, but you know, again, this is a temple of truth. I'm sure people will come and come back to me and tell me whatever they need to say. That's right. That the people in diaspora in the diaspora should actually self-organize, right? Because I really, really am very um the way Senegal handled themselves, right? Are we saying we can't handle ourselves in the same way? We know that the judiciary will fail. We know that the executive has already failed. We know the government can know it's not gonna do anything. But the people in diaspora, we need to organize ourselves. We need to be the fourth pillar in a way to try and Meet, you know, correct whatever it is that is going on. I'm not sure how we can do it, but I feel like we can self-organize. We can do what the Senegalese did, but, but we are in the, the diaspora. Because if we're waiting for the government to resolve issues, we know that this government is not going to work. And, and I've been saying that people who are waiting for 2027, I think we are being foolish in waiting for 2027 because APC will only perfect whatever they did in 2023 and repeat it in 2027. And if we don't do anything about it, we'll all fold our arms, sit down on this problem and keep talking about it. But seeing the things that happen in Senegal, it's supposed I feel like it's supposed to ginger people and say, we can't wait for 2027. We actually have to do whatever we need to do now. If it means getting these people out of government, we need to do it now. You can't, 2027 is too far. 2025 self is too far. I feel whatever needs to happen needs to happen this year. We need to chase the likes of Tinubu and every other, all his allies out of the country. Look at, or, or, or you know, you have even people like countries like Senegal and the rest there. They, they, look at him talking to, to France and whatever. Whether or not he follows through, we don't know. But at least they're telling you that we want to own our resources. We want to do our own thing, right? So I feel like, you know, if, if we're going to kind of move the needle in that direction, the diaspora has a big, a very big, you know, part to play. And we need to start self-organizing ourselves in a way that we can actually, you know, kind of be a force to be reckoned with, whether or not our vote counts for the vote, at least be a force to be reckoned with. Okay, so that's yes, my... That, my then, uh, so. You know, pursue that and ensure that uh, it is, uh, you know, it's something we possibly, whether, you know, win or lose, it is something that is worth uh, pushing than just to be... Yeah. See, you know, and again, I say this, you know, this this whole self-organizing in order to dismantle the government is not so that we can create a new Nigeria, because even the diaspora can still push that whole, you know, initiative of breaking up the country, of, you know, regional governance, you understand? So it's not just going to be, oh, let's try and get, we need to still wrestle this country from the, the clutches of the current government. Then after we've done that and we've actually have a government that we can listen to, then we now to, we need to push for either the changing of the constitution and then the breakup of the country. That's the only way I feel like we can do it without a lot of bloodletting. People will die, don't get me wrong, at the end of the day, you know, and I kind of made my peace with that because it's it, to say that it's going to happen without sacrifice is, you know, it's like burying your head in the sand. You know, they're going to fight back. That's just the truth. They will fight back because they're not going to let go easily. No. So me saying that the diaspora should organize ourselves and 
you know, try and, and find a way to also be a part of that movement that we want, that like, that country or that region that we are looking and, forward you know, to. We should go, we should go beyond, you know, something again as well, right? Uh, all of us would have to also know that uh, we would need to go beyond what our money can do. A lot of us will have to throw ourselves into the ring, okay? Whereby yeah. we have actually we actually have to be at the forefront. Not all of us, but there are people who have these callings that can actually be the reps, the faces, the voices that we want. Okay, we saw what you saw in uh, Senegal: the Sonko guys, the Fire guys, and all of their own team of uh, diasporans that returned back to their country. They didn't just return. Okay, the oh. uh, call yourselves together organize uh you know uh set uh, some level of a movement collaboration networking and all of that the diasporas can yeah. meet and build this network and one of these days all of that could be put behind somebody or a group of people of like minds yeah. so yeah it post absolutely right group, i believe and that's what I'm saying. That I feel like the diaspora has a huge part to play in the in the in the, in the region that we're looking for. Even in the, even if it means in the breakup of Nigeria, but I feel like everything has to be done in sequence. First of all, you need to raise, wrestle the government from these people, right? And then you know talk about either the constitution and then talk about regional governance, the way it was done in the Aburi Accord initially. Right. And then, you know, then you know, can now say, OK, we need to we can start having those conversations about referendums and things like that, where you know that people, the government will not interfere in the outcomes of those referendums. I know what the other previous caller was talking about, but, you know, I don't, I don't really want to dabble in speculation and assumptions about whether or not some people are, you know, organized um, um, opposition and things that are paid by the government. I really don't know anything. I only know myself. Right. And I know who, who I, what I'll vote for. But I feel like you know at the end it's it one step one step one step from one from point A to point B and the point point A for me I feel like is first of all get rid of this government because you cannot get anything from this particular set of people they will not let go the the way the country is run is what they want it to they be won't, they want it to be this way because it fight. benefits them they won't go down without a fight but once we can get rid of them then we can start having those same conversations around governance around okay we either need to go our separate ways or if we're going to be remain as a country then we we have to have different terms and conditions thank you so much uh sham for this uh, again okay you pass it on right. and a lot of people have uh, been sort of digesting it as well as usual right <laughs> so take care of yourself okay oh, i you will very much. possibly talk to you again you have a good one, ma'am. All right. All right, my good. Thanks. Yes, yeah. So I'm going to take my last call. And this last call is coming from this, my old brother, old timer, Jima Gudu. My TV brother, it's actually a good time for you to pop in. How are you? Good evening, my How are you? I am very well, Jima. How is the wee man? How is the is family? The wee man now, he's already becoming a big boy. Like you have just chased yourself around <laughs> in the house. You is because of him now. He got the guy they give me wala cry everywhere. He's turned terrible too. So boy, I they get them left, right, front, and center. Don't worry, you will soon take a break, okay? And I mean when uh, you know they don't throw uh, tantrums anymore, they just kind of want to rival you. And you'll be like, ah, you don't let all reach me, or you this little thing. So Ivan, he's just two, he just he's just two, and he don't reach my waist already. See ya. Yeah, yeah, boy. You will soon get your you don't worry, you will soon get your own uh, freedom. I'm dealing with that of that Konkolo one too. So when they, I, don't want to start, I don't want to start that with you. I, so Baba, I see. a lot has been happening, and one of them is uh what so many people have been touching tonight as well, right? Where people uh -huh. actually don't they said now we they react because we too they hear too much, or we think say we they see too much. But well, people back in that place don't really give uh, yeah, any left yanch for anything. Your take, okay. Yuma. My, me, I go tell you, I don't tell you before now. Say, until these guys, Nigerians, begin stone their criminal politicians for road one by one, where they see them, anywhere where they see them, they just stone them. I will not take anything they do serious no. because they're not ready for to live free. They're not ready to, they don't know what they don't, they're not ready to enjoy their life. So they want to suffer, and that is what it is, unfortunately, because I don't understand. 
why somebody would travel from Nigeria to go for travel to Nigeria to go and do business with you is about to spend 38 million naira. That's right. And you just goof. The guy just commonly asks you a question, and you just you just pour out your mind. You just talk nonsense. You take me that's me where where you have a business that somebody can buy thirty eight million. If anybody enter my place me. now, where they do my business, and he's about to spend thirty eight million, and he says, uh, "Are you a Yoruba nation or uh, for one Nigeria?" Yeah. But people first pretend. Say, okay, wait. Because this is not a tricky question, though. I say you for Baba. What about you? Which one are you? you? Uh -huh. Now you go first. Let me then say, I'm, I'm, I'm for Yoruba nation. I say, hey, we are all for Yoruba nation, Baba. Uh, we all want Baba to call, we want a nation that uh, I'm going to switch and change them. But well, I don't think Baba uh, that thing. I don't be evil man. No, I'm thinking. Baba born that thing. I don't be evil man. No, you want to spend 38 million for my shop, but I can't be able to do it for you that right moment, there and then. That moment, right I'll you. become a do it for you, right for you. For you straight you know. or IPOB or anything that you want there. You want to spend 38 million, I'll be spending them now. Oh boy, hey, Baba, you see that truck where they carry come off from Benue State, Baba? Yeah. I am from Ushongu local government, and anybody that knows Benue State very well knows that Chwandi local government and Ushongu local government used to be one local government called Chwandi local government until they split Chwandi local government and then it now became Ushongu and Chwandi local government. What is coming out from quantity? What is coming out from that? This that those uh, at the back of those trucks are lithium ore. Lithium has been discovered in Benue State. Those days where we don't be in day there, so that thing has been going on for some time now. So imagine how many trucks have been going out of there. You know what lithium the people, is you used. Know what the people say, say since mm. uh, autumn and others, the politicians will discover these things, right, and kept it. You go this shock, say now one of them go be they run that thing. We've seen them now him that they pay any small change, whether they pay for that thing for I mean pay them to right. And the rest of us who is now raising alarm here now. What is all this? What is all this thing? The same guy go they pretend like us to see how much how can they be doing this in our state on a lot? Yeah, if you know the corruption. If you know the corruption that is going on in, 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 in Nigeria, you would not be encouraged to even beat your hand on your chest and call yourself a Nigerian. The corruption that is going on there. You are taking out lithium from that place to, to China to go and make batteries for EV cars that you will use your same money in your budget again to go and buy. buy. Meanwhile, the people are dying in that, in that place. That area that you that area that, that those trucks are coming coming out from there's mineral resources in those grounds that you won't believe what is there. Hmm. You won't believe what is there. But you see, the the people, the, the people will be there shouting, hey, APC, PDP, they are looting your, your generational shake it come off of your body. Well, it is what it is until the until Nigerians decide to wake up and see that. Man, this whole thing is not going to be sustainable. You cannot sustain Nigeria like this. I mean, this is it's un so sustainable. You carry 300 terrorists put back inside society. Yeah. Say you clear Say, wait, you clear say you clear them. Nobody. But you went to Okwaba, where yeah, you were in Delta State, eh? to go and be murdering innocent people. Because you are because you are looking for what you are looking for people that killed army. Okay, wait, Meanwhile, wait. these guys are being pardoned in the north. But tomorrow, northerners, northern elders will come out and tell you that uh, the north is not safe. The north is not. Why is the north not safe? Because you are releasing terrorists into the society. What do you think they are going to do? Huh? What do you think they are going to do? They are going to attack your people when they don't have money. There's no. There's no electricity. There's no food. There's no water. There's nothing. Are you not the same northerners crying of hunger? But you allow 300 terrorists to integrate into your society and you expect uh, Kumbaya, Abi, also no. no. Alex Onyema, if he made that statement, because I haven't seen the I'm video, just like you said. The video, honestly speaking, I haven't seen I have to bring the video if, here to all of us. All of us can react the same way. I say, oh my God, no. If Alex, if Alex Onyema made that statement, right? Well, I don't blame you. He's a businessman. He, he will say whatever he wants to say so that he looks good in front of his people that he wants to do business with. But I will tell Alex Onyema that 
somebody living on two thousand pounds doesn't have to worry about being kidnapped. That's doesn't want to have to worry about. Uh, doesn't have to worry about whether he is going to buy rice at the supermarket, whether he's going to be there. Doesn't have to worry about bad roads, hospital, uh, whatever you can. All those things are mitigated. So that two thousand pounds is for you to do whatever you want to do with pay your bills, buy your groceries, do your stuff, pay your insurance, live your life. Own a car concept if you can drive. Own a car. Oh, even go uh, on holiday a good once cow. a year if your bill is yeah. for you. Save enough that you can even go no. on holiday once a year. Now, can Alex and Yima tell me whether that person living on 200,000 naira a month it's buy a plane ticket to come to, to UK? But they are so proud when they say all those nonsense from that place. And you go to see some other movies. They say, it's true. Oh, it's true. Let me tell you something. Say, what is true? Eh? People don't. People are not thinking. That's the problem with Nigeria. Nigeria has a a, a population who which is made Somebody up of ignorant and ill-educated people. Thinking that Nigerians no get. They no get. Lack. Uh, they lack ability. it. Yeah. Somebody will just come and stand in front of you and say blah 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 blah, and you will just and you see all that way you go say it's true. He's <laughs> saying the truth. It's true. See what is truth? What truth is he saying? I know what I'm saying. I have, I have this my uncle in London. He's, uh, he's, he's earning 4,000 pounds. He cannot even give you 50,000 error. He's so poor. Meanwhile, my Can uncle you compare his in lifestyle? He's a carpenter. He makes 150,000 a month. He's a very... I say, ah, you're making up all this. <laughs> so that I can we come really. to you and be... We really. I don't know. A lot of people just keep on showing on, 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 on everywhere online. Hey, no. I'm going to show you everywhere. You know, some of them will come to you. They will say, hey, do you know how much, how much is house rent? Do you, you know how much can you call? Uh, meanwhile, in Nigeria, eh, with minimum wage, you can still enjoy your life. I say, hello, uh, mama, I shall never uh, you. I shall we... never be poor again in my life. I shall never be poor. I shall never be poor. Because you see, <laughs> they've made them believe so many things that a lot of them have become demotivated, that they are contented with any, any little crumb that falls on their lap. And they will say, ah, big man, carry 10, I mean, 2010, uh, 2010 is too far. Go and carry 2005 uh, Camry and carry give one of them. Now, big man. Ah. Big man, uh, big man, uh, big man. Big grace. Big grace, man. yeah, Baba, grace. Now, grace, now, grace. Now, you don't do so. Now, grace, now, grace. You go buy 2024 car. Baba, you do money ritual. <laughs> yeah, you are you wasting money. Go and look for one latest fine car, 2010. Now, let this be that in that place. Yeah, well, I, you see, the, 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 the problem is the problem is ignorance and ill, Ill education. And it's and actually, nothing, they are, nobody they are can tell me. Gossip. People like they use wrong English. Contentment means <laughs> they are not making much and yeah. they are happy. No, 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 no. Happy. What happened is that uh, the contentment I mean is that they are contented in that uh, fake life. Poverty. Because you know something Poverty. behind that. But I wait till you see this one there. Eh? You will see somebody will say they don't pay them salary for the past uh, two years. But guess what? They see they pay school fees of their children, that they pay house rent. And to others, eh? Now, nah, grace of God that they take mm -hmm. survival. And grace of now. God that be corruption. <laughs> like 70,000. Well, he has a child in London that they are sending school fees to. How is he doing? How is she doing that? Grace of God. Now, nah, grace. Now, nah, grace, Baba. They are, that's that's Nigeria for you. Logic so is told upside down. Two hundred thousand for Nigeria. Don't build houses. You wait there. You get the end two thousand. You never see money build houses because your two thousand is your earning. You do not have to do any other <laughs> shady things that uh, you have to uh, pretend and say that nah, only five hundred dollars at the end. No, I don't build house of uh, thirty thousand dollars. How? How? Well, H H H M R C H M R C no go call you. Come come and me. You can't explain. <laughs> the decrease, Baba. Anyway, well, me, I, me, I go, me, I go drop out for you, for you, Baba. Well, well done, though. Well, yeah, well done. So much. It's good to hear from you again, okay? You are too much, Baba. Okay? Okay. I will. All right, Baba. Time, okay? Thank you so much. And that's a Jima. Jima, good to my own dear brother from uh, Benway. I'm glad somebody from Benway has been able to shed more light uh, on that uh, truck video, okay? So, Let's now see how this, uh, you know, why am I even saying let's see how it's going to go? We know how this is going to go. Probably we expect nothing to happen. No matter the expose, the exposure, the all of this, right? Let's meet again tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, right?
and that is going to be a TGIF. So thanks so much for spending your evening with me again tonight. I am going to see you some other time. And until then, please, don't leave without a like in the broadcast if you haven't already. I will see you some other time. Good night. From here. <laughs>